welcome to Unfiltered Caffeinated Chats. I'm your host, Nathan Hatchie, and right next to me we have Rome, Orlando, Larry, and Sam. We're just here to have some conversations here, unfiltered, over a cup of coffee early Saturday morning. So thank you for tuning in. Yes, sir. So I'm just going to do a quick little intro. We got Larry here, who's a writer, photographer, videographer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, jack of all trades, master of none, or master of some. A master of some. <laughs> <laughs> and he low-key can't stand, bro. Nah, I can't stand none of y'all. No. <laughs> <laughs> all y'all get on my nerves. <laughs> and then we have Sam here, a youth. Youth pastor, husband, father, entrepreneur, loving husband, and he loves them kids. When some of us say the opposite of loving kids sometimes. Mm -hmm. Loving husband. Yeah, loving husband. Mm -hmm. If I miss anything, then we got Rome over here. Father, husband, entrepreneur, audiovisual producer, and soon to be blessed with the with the studio. Amen. Amen. We're going to speak that into existence. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, we are. And right. then we have Orlando here. Hey. A husband, father, comic book writer, yes. entrepreneur. And, you know, everything else in between and a loving man. Show me the money. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to go off the cup here and name the episode is Love Enough. Okay. You know, when it comes to love, mm. men's love languages and women's love languages, it's two different things. We all try to accomplish the same goal, but our trajectory on getting there and our meanings on getting there is just different. And, Rome, you had an interesting topic when we spoke yesterday yeah. about, um, let's say, for example... We love to get together, but our lives just carry different paths. So when we do get together where it's a month apart or two months apart, once we finally do connect, it's like we don't miss a beat or anything like that. No. Then we go home, take a shower, watch a game. Our ladies ask us, how was, how was it with the fellas? Oh, it was cool. It was good. <laughs> Want to talk about it? Nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. nah. <laughs> but when ladies get together, regardless of what it is, they want to talk about, oh, my God, we did this. Oh, my God, we did And it's just to us, it's it sounds like nothing, but... It, to them, it's everything. But then it seems like, oh, well, you don't love me? <sighs> like, okay, let's talk about it. No, I don't want to talk about it more. So what are you guys' perspective on that? Or, or how, what do you got, what light you want to shed on that? I think it's important to understand what the love language are. A lot of times people haven't even read the love languages. Uh, mm. Sam and I, we were in, at least involved in our church. We've actually done the love languages before uh, at one of our church retreats. So my wife's love language is uh, acts. Acts of service. Acts of yeah. service. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mine is touch. Mm -hmm. Touch touch me. <laughs> so we're on two different levels, but especially I think that's the, one of the things. Especially when the belly full. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Sometimes so, touching can be an act of service. Just putting that out It there. can yeah. be. It, it was. It was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's one of the things I think is really important to take a look at that aspect because that's one um, – when it comes to relationships, when it comes to those things, if you understand your significant other's love language, hopefully you'll be catering to it, and that makes things a little bit easier and a little bit uh, more steadfast when it comes to those things. I know she likes me to clean up and do things around the house. She knows I want to be touched, and sometimes i got to tell her, you haven't touched me in a little while, that she'll come over and start touching. Not Nothing sexual or anything like that, but just, you know, cuddle or anything like that. And, that, and that's good enough. It's as yeah. simple as holding hands yes. or just yes. that, that yeah. intimate hug. Yes, you know? yes, yes. yes. Okay. Nah, I'm waiting on Sam. I know, me too. Sam's yeah. been quiet this Everybody's morning. Everybody's waiting yeah. on Sam. I know, what up, Sam? <laughs> no, y'all on deck. Go ahead. Swing the back. <laughs> Swing at it. You can softball pitches. Swing away. Oh, softball, softball pitches. All yeah, right. yeah. All right, so let's talk about this. I'll, I'll go into it my ex. Fair enough. You know, so... When I was married with my ex-wife, there was a girl that my boss hired at the movie company. Her name was, uh, we're not going to say her full name, but we're right. going to call her Miss Filipino Fang. Okay. Oh, so the names are being changed to protect the innocent? Is that, yeah. is that what we're doing? What we're I'm the doing. innocent. She the guilty. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm, just kidding. I'm, just kidding. I'm starting to I'll, wake up, y'all. I'm, I'm guilty now. I'm guilty okay. now. So when she got hired, and I didn't tell my ex about it, and all of a sudden she saw her on the DMC, Desert Movie County is where I used to work at, social media page, like, who's this? Oh, yeah, she t they hired her. When were you going to tell me about that? Well, you know, she they, uh, didn't think nothing of it, you know? So not only was she attractive, and then all of a sudden... Was this someone you knew before? No, 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 no. So, you, so your ex-wife expected you to just to tell her yeah. that they hired someone that was pretty? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? But she, uh, she cared. Love language, well, right? But you knew that, right? I knew that. Ah, oh, there's yeah. where I think. Oh, yeah. That's the key question. Oh, okay. yeah. You must ask the right question. Exactly. So it's one of those things <laughs> I silly. filter that out to avoid the the bull jive. Yes. But the bull jive is like, no, we coming, Nate. And it came. 
So all of a sudden, she started just insinuating stuff, and she watched a lot of Lifetime movies. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I worked on Lifetime movies. Yeah. 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 (laughs) I worked on Lifetime movies, too. (laughs) (laughs) That's not realistic depiction of Lifetime at all. You met my ex. Lifetime, Hallmark. You met my ex. You met my ex. Never happens. Never happens in real life. You met my ex. I knew how to pick her, man. She was a smoker, drinker, and a Mm. gambler. I'm like, yeah, put a ring on it. Wild Western. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Huh? Yeah, well, I, was like, I was like, smoke, drink, and gamble? Say less. <laughs> but anyways. Yeah, you know, see what I mean? I'm at all. To, I'm about to do it. Not, 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 at, at all. At all. all. Yeah, that that might all. be in a pearl. That might be in a pearl. Oh. So she started insinuating things. How was work today? It was good. What did you and little Miss Filipino thing do? She just helps me out with booking jobs this and that and administrative stuff. How administrative? I'm like, what? Turns out she watched a Lifetime movie about an attorney oh, oh. having an affair with the secretary and blah, 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 blah. So she's probing. She's, she's probing, probing to see, like, okay, what's Nate doing? Where? And Nate taking the bait the yeah, whole but, way. Yeah. yeah but that, but the, the thing yeah. was, Nate's unaware of what's in her psyche, what's running through her mind, what she just witnessed no, no, and took no. as... He said no. smoker drinking a gamble. No. He knew exactly no, no, no. what yeah, he but, signed okay. up for. No, he yeah. knew, <laughs> no, he no, even, he even yeah. started off, he knew that she would want to know. And then yeah. the first thing he said you're was right, he didn't right. tell her. You're so right. now he's already evading the expectation. Yeah. So we have to really look at what the motive was behind that. Yeah. If you knew she would want to know, I'm just very curious, even as a therapist myself. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you tell her? Why, did, why, did, why didn't you... Do what you were supposed to do. Well, that's another topic I want to get into. Ah, so on my case, okay. on my case, like, what do we tell our spouses that we withhold and does it ever come back and bite? Mm. Now, in that case, I withheld that thinking she don't need to know. It ain't like I have any intentions with it. And all is good. I'm just here to do work, pay the bills, and go home. Not Her trying case, to inc- create conflict. Not trying to create. But conflict was like, nah, 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 nah. Okay. We, we coming. We coming. We all be coming. So conflict came, conflict found. Right. Social media, that's another topic we could probably get into when right. it all pertains to love, right. too. And, yeah, that was another battle I had to deal with. It wasn't something that definitely shifted the marriage, but it was just a definite big-ass speed bump that was like I really was trying to take the smooth, paved ground. Uh, I know. I, I feel like that was just so unnecessary, man. You got to set uh, boundaries and expectations for sure. And I don't think that it's, it's important to tell your spouse or your girlfriend that your job hired someone that just happens to be pretty Mm -hmm. that's unnecessary because a person's beauty is unnecessary to their work unless it's you know depending on what industry you're in but if you're working for a moving company and you just hire some pretty filipino girl who cares why do i need to go back and tell Hey, girlfriend, guess what? They hired this pretty Filipino girl. That's just confident. You're asking Why, for are, why are you telling me that? Yeah, exactly. Why are you telling me that? Yeah. So it's like it's unnecessary. So, but it's basically her insecurities. Mm-hmm. She saw that there was a, a girl that was pretty that you work with. And she saw that she felt insecure. And that's not your responsibility. I don't think that is our responsibility to tell. Why would you tell her that? Because mm-hmm. then you're just raising suspicion. You're asking for a conflict. You're asking for it. And say, I see it absolutely the opposite way. You it know is. she wants to know. You didn't tell her, so that's going to cause a conflict right there. But what does that prove? And if you've got nothing to hide, what's the problem with telling them, hey, I know I know how my wife is, I know how my lady is, so let me just tell her what's going on, i got nothing to hide, then we should be good to go. It's when he avoided that speed bump, when he took the other route, the that actually are. caused it to happen. Maybe I'm misunderstanding something, but I think that that's trash. <laughs> I'm not I'm not I can't I'm not tolerating any relationship where I have to report to my wife about the hiring Maybe, and of that's someone perspective else. because yeah. As yeah, you're that you're is. approaching it as like you have a you have to make a report. Why do I have to inform you on these day to day or play feels by like play? It's like homework back in right. school. Right. Yeah. Now, but here's the thing: out of love and courtesy for your right. wife, That's right. respect. Hey, and maybe it's the approach. Yeah. You, one, it's the willingness to say, "Hey, I'm willing to just inform you of the new change in my work atmosphere." No, but if it was a guy, right? Remember, the women and guys are different. Yeah. I understand that, but if I'm working at a job and my job who has nothing to do with me, my job hires. A John, mm-hmm. I wouldn't go back to my girl and be like, "Yeah, so they hired this dude named John today." She'd mm-hmm. be like, yeah, "Who cares?" Uh, but see, I would, and that's what's different. Because here's a great example, um, especially because Larry and I have a history. We actually uh, got to work together um, for a company for about five five years together, yeah. and yeah. we we built a good bond. But because of the people we worked with, mm-hmm. I w- I was traveling 
and I had a lot of uh, executives that happened to be females that had to travel with me. But out of the courtesy for my wife, I informed her, I was like, oh, sweetheart, FYI, M's gonna be coming with, you know, we just, right. got, we just picked up a new um, media specialist and they're gonna be traveling with us and she's really cool, you know, I, you know and FYI, just, she's gonna be going here, going here. No big deal, but she gave, I gave her a forewarning Sorry. versus next, I'm in another state and now she's seeing me with random women on social media. Who are these people? Where'd they come from? It's like, I need to be, I'm showing love and courtesy to inform her so she's not caught off guard to let her mind run away, especially as yeah. you said, we were talking about social media. Yeah. And that's There's the key. There's a big culprits to that. That's it. That avoids the appearance of impropriety. Mm. And that's what it is in, the, in a nutshell right there. Avoiding the appearance of impropriety. So I would have done exactly right. what Rome would have done and kept it pushing. But uh, one, now I know my history. Now we all got a history, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know my history. I know my motive. If I would have avoided telling my wife this or telling anything like that, I know how I am. I know mm. how I was. Mm -hmm. And if I'm hiding that, what is my motive behind hiding that? That means my mind's about to go somewhere or starting to go somewhere where I don't even want to go there. You know, I want to be be transparent in the relationships and, and especially out of respect for my wife. And I know how I think. I'm a man just like anybody else. Yeah. I love her to death. But if my mind is going there and I'm hiding that from her, where else is this going to lead to? Remember, these things are called, I call them lies by omission. Did you lie? No. But you, you, if you deliberately... Not hide, <laughs> hide the truth. Hide, not informed. You got to look at the motives behind that. She probably would have deliberately uh, try to look for that smoke too. Uh, I just have I don't, a hard I don't time grasping that. I concept. don't. I don't think anybody at the table is wrong right now. <laughs> yeah. It's your house. What works for your house may not work for another man's house. Mm -hmm. You, he didn't marry Michelle, or Cheryl. You know, he, we all, who, who we're married, in relationships with. Buckwild. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when you really look at it, it's how he wants to dictate his house and, and lead in his way. No, is that really dictating his house and leading his way? Or yeah. is that actually reciprocating for what yeah, the because, needs of your spouse are? Well, facts are, all my boys are married in a bay. Right. And none of their wives would be able to be married to me. There's a different understanding with I have with my wife. Right. I'm in an industry that's mostly female dominated. Mm -hmm. So I have to be on the up and True up that. to some of the points you guys are making, being forthcoming, who I work with, who I'm collaborating with, all those things. But you can't tell every move you make I would proactively. Agree with that. It, it, let me finish though, okay. because when I'm traveling and you get a photo op and it's on someone else's social media, maybe not even mine. That Natural thing talk. goes viral. So I can't always control the narrative of who I'm gonna meet and where I'm gonna meet them. But I can't share with her my experience on the road exactly. in that rock star world of coming off the road and telling what I did and where we were at. But she has to have a certain security and confidence in herself right. because I cannot. It's called self-esteem. I cannot control your self-esteem, how you feel about you all the time. Self. There's things I can do to help encourage that. There's things I can do to help. Uh, manage that, but I cannot be responsible for your feelings twenty four seven. No, I agree with that, but and, I also and, and, and so, so what Larry's speaking to, he's talking about what wasn't, what doesn't work for him in a relationship, and that's nothing wrong for that. Yeah. He's not wrong for how he feels about how he wants his relationship to go, because some women don't care. No, I agree with that, right. but so, I say I say that's a difference, though. You're, that's part of your industry. That's a standard. No, but it this doesn't matter. Expectation. But it's still people. In Next anywhere you work, you're dealing with people. The exception. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That was the exception. Now, if your wife goes in that knowing this is what your industry is, I think that's a whole different ball game. Then here's the exception: this pretty Filipino got hired, and that, I think that's two totally different things. Yeah. In, in industry aside, no matter where you go, you're going to deal with people. And so, there's only two types of people: male, female. <laughs> so, that's it. nah, it, you're wrong it's, about that. It's one. about your Some relationship. Might disagree, <laughs> but I <can't. laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, LGBTQ. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. This is a, <laughs> I'm not intending to disrespect they got LGBTQ she, out. I'm not intending to disrespect no, but at all. I'm just saying there's a, even oh, that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm like, I'm uh -huh. that Be careful right what now. you step in. <laughs> no, but hey, listen, I'm not ashamed at all. I mean, God, yeah, fair created, enough. Two, fair God enough. created two genders, period. And okay. it's not to be offensive to anybody else. True. I'm not trying to offend anybody else. I got love for everybody else. Mm. It don't matter what you identify as. If that's what you, if you want me to call you, Susan, when you were born, John, I'll call you Susan. Fair enough. Don't, that doesn't really matter to me because you got to answer to God. I don't got to answer for you. But I'm saying there's no matter what industry you're in, those are your two choices. 
I, it don't really matter the industry you're in. I'm not going to tolerate somebody trying to control uh, me telling them everything that's what's going on in my and industry. That's, 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 that's going true. back to that perspective that I was saying. That's how you're, you're getting that. Sorry, let me get my thoughts together. As she's approaching these questions to you, okay, interrogating you, what's this, or probing, you yourself is like, I'm not going to tolerate that. I'm not going to deal with that type of approach. But here's the thing. If you have a willingness from any relationship, right. it's like, oh, you know what? I already know that this could cause conflict. Exactly. So let me just go ahead and exactly. put her at ease. Relatable. The three of us did a major production about three years ago, sent us mm -hmm. out of state. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got introduced to what now is an elite. Like, Sam, you are an elite. Like, Larry's an elite. You guys, when we broke bread in that bar, we prayed up, we had deep conversation, and I got to know true men of Christ. All right. I called my wife. Glory to God. I was like, yo, you wouldn't even believe what just happened. We ate some cornbread and greens. That's all she got. That's the only information she got. But she knew I informed her, like, I was like, man, we went to a bar, we had a beer, I ordered some cornbread and some greens, and we just talked, and we closed the bar down. Mm -hmm. She did, that's all I had to give her. Exactly. But just that information, my willingness to share with right. her, I ended up meeting men that I actually can roll with, that put her at ease. I was out, we were out until one in the morning. Right. She did no, not, not care. I'm not Denver, talking Colorado. about not sharing with your yeah. girl anything. I'm saying if there, we're talking specifically about other women in our in our workspace. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So I don't mind sharing what's going on, what's happening, and if questions are asked, I'm happy to answer. It. I don't have anything to hide. I'm 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 an oversharer in most in, in some cases. But I'm saying if someone hires, if my job hires a girl that works with me, I had no control over right. that company Agreed. hiring this person. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Exactly. Agreed. And I wouldn't tell my girl. If a guy got hired, so why would I tell her if a girl got hired? Unless there was something going on there. And I think it's actually more suspicious yeah. to go, hey, girlfriend, uh, they hired some girl named Sally today. And she, why are you telling me? So is Sally, and then it come to okay. question, is Sally cute? And that's what my answer would have done. Oh, no, I mean, I guess she's right. His girl is right. different. Yeah. Each relationship is different. Each relationship is different. That's why I'm based on your house. Because exactly. what works for Nate. What works for Rome may not work for Sam and Larry. Right. No, it, it, and there's no that. wrong in that. It's who you walk in this journey right, with. Right. And I right. don't like 21 questions. Like, and, I don't mind you sharing don't information. You don't And I feel the same way. I, I, I like swear I hate it. Because I'm like, <laughs> I have done nothing wrong Precisely. to make you question exactly. what I'm doing. Yes. And here's the thing. I have a willingness to inform you. So you shouldn't even step to me asking these type of questions. The 100%. tone, the aggression. I don't need it. I don't have to tolerate it. Right. I understand where you're coming from. But because I n am in anticipation and I know my wife, mm -hmm. I have no problem giving that 411 up front. Mm -hmm. But I've also built a relationship. Now I know she needs that information. Yeah. Right. She yeah. like that's who my wife is. And yeah. I have no problem because I've we built this unity. There you go. That I was like, OK, I know I put this on the calendar like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. She's like, where are you going? I'm going to go hang out with my boys. Oh, who's going? <laughs> the boys. OK. <laughs> Yeah, like, but see, I built a relationship that I now know I need to give her some 411 to absolutely. bring peace and so you, comfort you, you to her. You do need to give your spouse or your girl information, right? Just like you would want information from them if they're going out doing something with their But is that 21 questions? No, it's not 21 seconds, questions. So <laughs> because, <laughs> no, because if, so, if my girl asked me uh, or, you know, she said she was going somewhere, mm -hmm. I have maybe one or two questions, which is like, oh, okay, wh where are you going? Oh, I'm just going to the mall. All right, cool. Have fun. Uh, that's the end of it. I don't need to know all who going. I don't need to know what stores you're visiting. I don't need to know what's going on. Fair. I don't give a fuck. I don't, Can we cut? I don't yeah. give a yeah. heck. I don't, <laughs> I don't give a fuck about what's going on after that. Right, I right. just don't. And it's not that I don't care about her or what she's up to. I just, it doesn't bother right. me. But the opposite, I would get 35 questions. Well, who's going to be there? How long y'all going to be? What time are you coming back? And what's the problem with that? It, why do you need to know all that information? Well, it's the same reason why you don't need to know the information. It's their love language. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, you can't. It can't. Key. It can't be just one way. There goes the key. I guess mm -hmm. it can't be a one-way street because yeah. what doesn't what works for you may no, not work for it, her. So make, you gotta I, you have to consider what makes them feel good. Right. I'm not saying all of it. I'm just saying you gotta consider it, and you gotta figure out how to weed through that. And the way it comes off, mm -hmm. keeping it real from my point of view, you sound like you don't want to give none of it. 
I don't want to give any of it, not because I'm withholding information just for the sake. I, I'm I'm very, um, what's the word, uh, uh, rebellious when it comes to, if I'm going to offer you the information, then I'll, I'll give it to give you the information. Okay, so I'm a, I'm when a, you I'm interrogate a, me, then I'm like, well, what's the I'm, I'm going to throw something at you, Larry. Get, You're going to like this. Mad. I'm going a, I'm to a go off script and ask you a question. Oh, okay, here we go. What if you married yourself? <laughs> yes. It no. would work. Oh, no. yes, it would. No, it would. Work. Yes, it would. would. No, it would. <laughs> you kill yourself. No, Cause, cause because I'm. I nobody wish. be talking to nobody. No, right. You divorce <laughs> no, yourself. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. You'd be divorced yeah. already. If, if that could be the case. Suing each other for child support. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. It'd be game over. This podcast would be done. If I met a girl that was. Prettier than me, but was the same. Well, as obviously, me. she's prettier than you. Because <laughs> I'm not the prettiest. Girl. You know, no, you got sexy hair, but you're sexy though, baby. You know, <laughs> I'm that, sexy, but I'm yeah, sexy Superman though. curl and all that. You know, he got that uh, S curl she, from she the got, 90s, from the 80s. Girl. <laughs> Larry, sexy baby, y'all should be in the studio. And the five, and the five o'clock shadow. Yeah, right. Rick James actually. <laughs> 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 That's why I can't stand none of y'all. <laughs> See. No, but I'm saying if I met someone that was similar to me, we'd get along. Because you would get happened. along, but you wouldn't be married. Why? Because you just said you don't like questions, so none of y'all talk. No, I don't like. <laughs> it, no, no, I don't like <laughs> excessive <laughs> questions. Again, basic know, questions playing. like, "Oh, where are you going? I want to know where you're going." Well, you, you. Don't, but that's really it. But you don't, don't really, want to be asked where see, you're going. Then you the so one. You can ask me. You're one in and, a million. And who you're going with? And and the rest that goes along with that? Yeah, but then what you had there's there's all the all the all the extra stuff is too much. It's like, well, what did you have to eat? Did you like it? What was what did you wash it down with? What'd you drink? Who, what, what, who was the waiter? Huh? You what? know what? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, let me, in, I got to interject <laughs> here. I'm going to give a scenario. Yeah, like what? This, for me, there was a scenario that I, uh, I encountered. And right. what it was, was, and it comes down to this in my world. The, give me the opportunity to tell you. Yes. That's the challenge that I have learned That's to good. just walk through. It's like, I need to get home, decompress. Let me process the key moments that took place. Mm -hmm. And once I got that down and I know how to formulate it, I would willingly tell you. Wrong. But 65% right. of yes. the time, and I'm saying collectively here, we get home. Right when we get home, we, oh we put God. our shoes, they take our shoes off, and then we're hit with questions. Yes. I don't have the opportunity to share with you because you're already interrogating me. Damn. Or it feels like but I'm getting interrogated. Consider but they're, this. they're just interested in what you, they're, right. they're not interrogating. But they, but in the same thing to but, go back to your statement. They aren't interrogating you, Larry. it feels like it. But for you, they're just, they, they love you. They're they miss interested. you. They want to know what they happened in your know. day. How was my baby's day? How did you spend it? Right. I right. love you. I but care about you. So I'm going to kick you. Because we walk in the door and it's we're hit with these questions right within the first even okay any man that walks in the house needs at least 25 minutes to decompress yeah, I, get me I, some I, I water let that. me go yes. use the bathroom no, I'll, I'll raise let it to me 30 go. <clears throat> yeah i'll okay. raise it to 30 Sorry, I, need I, mean, a, I need a cool 30, 30 minutes no but yeah. right yeah. but here's the thing in my atmosphere in my house my own kids won't even give me my 10 minutes well daddy can i and it's like okay i'll give them them grace but it's funny. I won't give my wife that same grace. Well, see, and that's what we're talking about when you say grace. Right. Um, you have to consider in the dynamics of the household, you poured into the whole world, but your house. And this is for, where, for your house. Right. Right. So when you come home, of course, they want to see how mm -hmm. you are. Right. How was your day? Agreed. Right. But right. we also need to be forthcoming and say, how was your day? When we walk and, in the door, what's going on? Because we, we need that moment of solitude to mm -hmm. decompress. Right. right? But you've been everywhere in the world the whole week, the whole day. True. What piece, mm -hmm. what fraction do they get of you tired to get the tired version of us, the hungry. frustrated, hungry version? Hungry. All, those, all, all those are real. All those are real. No, but, right. but they also tired. Exactly. They need to get away from the TV. But they ain't hungry. <laughs> <laughs> they might be hungry. They may want you to cook that night. No, we, no, you know, so no, so you right. <laughs> I know this. Nate talking about a whole nother hungry, y'all. <laughs> you know, hungry. but mm. we have to be mindful, especially the dy dynamics of the workforce. Now, a lot of us work from home, right? Mm. So that doesn't right. mean that you was home all day that you were present. And, and that's a very key thing. Physically. No, you're physically, okay. physically there, but proximity doesn't mean present. that you, you right. engage in having dialogue. That's right. Me and my wife both work from home, and we don't – sometimes we go hours without speaking. Hmm. I'm in my solitude. She's in hers. 
we work from home. We may not even have lunch together. Right. Because we're in we're we're two different places focused mentally. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. so the dynamics of you coming home, yeah, she misses you. And your kids miss you. Cuz your workload takes you on the go. So we have to consider what's more important, my 30 minutes. You may need it, but they need they they may need you front and center more immediately than our 30 minutes we want for ourselves because again they've been championing all the other things that we're not champion but i think that go ahead what's the other side of it what if what if you got home and nobody asked about your day Mm -hmm. nobody cared the kids weren't excited you were Mm -hmm. home and they didn't even pay attention to you i lived that life for 30 minutes i'm being real i'm already starting to crap about that because my boys are entering in this age where it's like they don't need dad they don't want dad exactly so you you can't have it both ways i'm not gonna i'm not disagreeing with it i just i'm going back to hopefully like where larry was coming from being, I don't need those 20 questions, and I don't want those 20 questions, but I think it's in the mindset of, you give me the opportunity to give you this information. Yes. Let me, okay. let, I want to give you this information, but if you cut me off before I even get the willingness to, I don't want to talk. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to hit That's all real. these questions right away. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm being real. It's funny. We can go months without seeing each other, and we get together, and we'll pick it up like nothing happened. Yeah. All yeah. right? And in doing that, we have a willingness. Oh, my God. Dude, Comic-Con. We got to go to the Comic-Con. Yep. Can you get the ad? Mm-hmm. Oh, Comic-Con. Oh, mm-hmm. did you see that clip? Oh, that, that clip? Oh, that but, film? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, last but, night. But boys are different from your wife. But, and true. I'm not disagreeing with that. But because we have gone, there's a gap. And when we get together, we have a willingness to share. Absolutely. I'm not hit with, where you at? Da, da, da. And I'm not saying Because we're not going to be asking you that. <laughs> but, but, that, but, that's, but that makes the willingness see, even that, yeah, more enjoyable when we right, get together. Right, right. I get that. I get uh, that. concept here. So why don't we care about where Rome has been? Because it's not my wife. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> right? right? Okay. Is, it, so, is this a trick question? <laughs> no. But okay, so why does <laughs> What's your going wife on? care about where you've been? She wants to be included still. She She's wants to be part of my journey. journey. And that, and that okay. is on a certain level, some kind of yeah, uh, no surface comparison. intimacy. Yeah, yeah, it really is. What, you said selfish intimacy? No, surface. <laughs> surface. Oh, surface. Surface. Surface, okay. we, we, surface we intimacy. Be yeah, we, we compare in the apples and zebras. Yeah. It's not even in the same right. hemisphere. Right. You can't compare your, your spouse with your boy. Mm. I understand, and I'm not I'm not comparing it, at least not directly, but I'm just saying what, what kind of security or insecurity is involved when our girlfriends and wives ask us, you know, I look at it like from the other point of view. Wow. The other point of view, I look at it like this, because I know where my wife would go with this. She asks me questions. Say I get irritated or whatever. First thing she's going to say, I'm just asking you questions. I want to know how your day was and see how you've been mm-hmm. all day. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. does that bother you? Yeah. Why are you getting irritable because I care about my what's been going on all day? Yeah. She goes, I just want to you know, have, see how things are going. And you got an attitude? That's just, that, And then, unless, you know, I'm, I feel guilty, feel guilty, you know feel uh, disrespectful or what have you. I said, How, uh, what, what is the problem with her? Now, if Sam asked me about the same thing, I wouldn't care. If Nate did, right. Larry, Ron, and all y'all can ask me, I would have said everything. But yeah. why would my wife ask me the same thing? Do I get an attitude? Mm-hmm. Do I want to strike back? Do I? And then, kind of like what Rome said, I'm going to shut down. Don't even want to talk about it now. We got to check where that, where, that motive, where that point of view is coming from. We got to see where that's coming from. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know where it's coming from with me. I, all I know is if you, if she, if my girl asked me, how was your day? And I go, oh, it was fine, it was cool, you know, nothing happened. You know, uh, well, what happened? I just said nothing happened, it was chill. I, just, I was just she's, at work. She's just taking an interest in you. Exactly. But she, she adores you. But they're you. not satisfied with the initial answer. No, because they want more of what, you. What, what? What uh, what answer was that? Much. It was okay. That that's not really an answer. <laughs> I mean, it, it really think an, about it. How was your day? Well, well, it's it okay. uh, exactly. Yeah. It's the answer that I gave you. So Ooh, I, I, I got a, I got a good one for y'all. So it's interesting that we're comparing bros, brotherly love mm-hmm. to our spouses. Bros to garden cool. No. 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Different no. area oh, code. Here we go. <laughs> area oh, code. Boy, here we go. See, so oh, oh, here we go. So it's interesting bro. that we wouldn't be offended if we talk to one another about right. the same topics and then we have an attitude with our spouse. So riddle me this. When we come home and they see us turned up about the game, <laughs> about our TV shows, mm. about our interests, our passions, our companies mm-hmm. that we run, and then we give them the silent treatment. Mm-hmm. How do you think that makes them feel, that we would go into such deep dialogue about, hey, I need this contractors here, and I'm doing this project there, but when we talk to them, it's, oh, it's cool. 
I think it how do you think that makes them feel? How does it make them feel? They probably feel uh, not included, left out. There you go. And do you um, care? And and do you care? Do you care? I, I I totally understand. I think a little bit of the difference is uh, the the questions that you ask. So it's with you guys. It's not general. It's specific. So, you know, you and I have had conversations about very specific things. You've asked me questions like, well, what do you love about filmmaking? What do you love about writing? What mm-hmm. do you love about X, Y, and Z? Well, that's an interesting question. What do I love about it? Well, Sam, I love X, Y, and Z about it. I've never been asked that by a girl. Okay. Mm. It's always general. How was your day? My day was fine. What else am I supposed to say after that? It was fine. You can it say a lot. Or if it was bad, I'll say it was a tough day. Well, why was it tough? It was tough because X, Y, Z. Then you can get, that's fine. If it was a good day and it was good, oh, I was good. It just was just it's, it was whatever. The questions are never uh, super specific unless okay. they are. And be careful what, what you, you ask for. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, exactly. Mm-hmm. So then, they're, mm-hmm. then they're super specific, right. and I'm mm-hmm. like, but now you mm-hmm. now you on my nerves because that's too specific. <laughs> so I, maybe I'm just a weird person. Maybe I'm just hard nah, to please. No, nah, you, Larry. I'm me. You Larry. No, you definitely I'm Larry. Larry. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely, definitely Larry. Yeah. <laughs> That's the name of the new podcast. He's definitely Larry. Yeah. It's definitely Larry. I think that'll be a clip. I'll just, I'll just caption that YouTube show. He definitely Larry. What do you mean by that? That's just me. Our new that's a new me. That isn't me. Definitely Larry. <laughs> he could be Brad. No, he definitely Larry. <laughs> <laughs> he hey, definitely Larry. Yeah. Nate, I want to take it back to that first question when right. you yeah. talked about the five love languages. Yeah. Um, how we got down this rabbit hole, we have to consider that those love languages can change over time too. Mm. That's true. Mm. They can evolve. So, you know, yeah. it, it can evolve. Great. My my wife is similar to you, uh, Orlando, where she's physical touch and mm-hmm. acts of service. That's a good thing. But I was gifting. I was doing all the mm-hmm. other love uh-huh. languages. Okay. Thought I was checking the right, the right boxes. boxes. So we have to still, even though you know your spouse. You gotta still get to know your spouse. Mm-hmm. They change over time. They re- yeah, but we change over time. We, no, I mean, it's a mutual yeah, thing. No, we yeah, are. Yeah, it's an ongoing all. process. Yeah. So what may bother you today may not bother you in five years, mm-hmm. but the questions or lack thereof. Mm-hmm. It, it, we we consider different things as we walk through this journey together. 100%. So I got one thing that bothered me ten years ago that don't bother me today. What's that? What's that? Oatmeal raisin cookies. See. Oh. <laughs> We all deep with it. We talk about relationships. Bring up Nate. raisin cookies. Oh, oh, that, there's that a story with that. Joke? That's a, that's an inside oh, joke all day. So, <laughs> once upon a time, we Would had you like Nate. to share with the group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my lovely wife made a nice dinner, and we she said invite Nate Nate dog over. So we had Nate dog over for dinner, and so my wife just being you know Betty Crocker, Susie Q, you know homemaker. Mm-hmm. She's she's wonderful in the I kitchen. She makes this nice, elaborate dinner, and then she goes, Nate, you, you want dessert? And, of course, Nate's like, yeah. She goes, I have some oatmeal raisin cookies. And he's like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now. What? In, in her house? That's what yeah, you mean? Really? And, and, you and, and, ain't her dinner? <laughs> yeah. This is how you yeah, respond? That's how he threw <laughs> that. <down. laughs> what? <laughs> So <laughs> we didn't see that train coming at all. And I left that house alive too. Ooh. So Orlando is appalled. That's when you that really know God. Is real. So <laughs> I'm surprised Sam didn't tackle him. It was so <laughs> unorthodox. It was so out of left field. We couldn't do nothing but laugh. <laughs> and so he insulted my wife, and I'm oh, laughing at the man. table. <laughs> With him. Oh, you caught hell after that. You should have caught hell after it, that, too, Sam. It, it was no other way to handle that. I would have gotten right. behind about you had, that. You, you had to laugh so we all didn't die. Right. <laughs> oh, so, so, so now, every now and again, when we don't like something, we throw down a Nate dog. <laughs> So he's the gift that keeps on giving. Nate, was that just a visceral reaction or what? what the, he was what, offended what by the oatmeal raisin cookies. Wait, wait, wait. Know, this <laughs> woman just cooked for you. I ate that. You were there at, being blessed at her house, oh. being served, being taken care of. She offers you, a, you could have polite, you know, oh, no, thank you, or I'm this and that. Oh. But <laughs> hell no. <Yeah. laughs> he said at top of his lungs. Oh. Nate. I said that like I knew. See, wait, in in your house, that echoed, too. (laughs) So it was just an epic moment in Nate. Wait, wait, how did she take it? What do you? That's what I'm saying. We all had to laugh. There's no other way to take that. It was like. Good stuff. Okay. So he ain't been back over since. uh, He's been back over. (laughs) (laughs) We we, we keep Nate on the prayer list. (laughs) 
keep you know. We're talking about people changing after eight, ten. That was ten. Ooh. Was it ten years ago? That was a minute. Yeah, that was a that minute was, ago. Was ten years so, ago. were you offended? No, I wasn't offended. Uh, what was just, it, what oh, was it about the oatmeal cookies that you, we was like hell no? Fuck oatmeal raisin cookies back then. See, Whoa. <laughs> see, <laughs> what yeah, oatmeal raisin but, cookies do to you, bro? No, nothing now. They good. <laughs> see, so he's evolved <laughs> from that. Yeah, I guess so. so See, you know, we pray for I everybody. For, okay, I went and for prayer works. Questions to twenty one reasons. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough, Nate. <laughs> there goes our sponsorship from Oprah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Otis Spunkmeyer does. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. that's all right. I'll DM Nestle. I'll DM Nestle. <laughs> I'll DM Nestle. Oh, wow. We do mm-hmm. like cookies mm-hmm. over here, y'all. Yeah, so do. don't get it we twisted. Do, yeah. And we hungry. Nate don't like them. <laughs> Nate I'm don't hungry. like them, but yeah. don't kill us over that. Over that. I'll eat the bro- uh, raisin cookies for sure. Mm-hmm. What if it comes to twenty one questions? I can't, I can't support that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just keeping it real. All right, 50 cents. Asking all those questions. Right. He's Larry. Uh, Remember that? <laughs> He's just Larry. <laughs> hey, I'm just Larry. I don't, I don't uh, like that. He is Larry. I'll take you off track. Go ahead with what you were saying, Sam. No, no, I'm good. That's it. <laughs> I've lost my point now. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> well, no, I actually want to uh, dig a little deeper on these love languages, mm. okay? Um, we are. We have all walked our journey in life, and we have experienced different aspects how have you seen yourself change in your own love language wow because i know for me like i'm acts of service and i'm gifts those are my primary two but what was interesting because i ended up learning that a new one started developing in me which was touch i wasn't that wasn't even i could be fine i could be in the same room with you not touch you and i'm cool but over the years with my wife, I have been blessed with a wife that her touch literally melts anger, hmm. conflict, mm-hmm. and it brings a, a, a strong immense of peace over me just by her placing her hand on my shoulder. I didn't realize how powerful her touch was for me. Mm-hmm. And that's how I have mm-hmm. grown in that space and to acknowledge like these love languages are real and as we get older, they evolve. Yes. New ones grow and yeah. develop in you. And I know for a fact I would not have the heart I have today if I didn't have her touch. And so I'm asking my men, my mm-hmm. gents, how has the, your love language changed over the years in what you've walked through? Well, so there's five love languages, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and so the concept is we all have all five. It's just which no. ones we don't. Have. Which ones are dominate? Yeah. So there's like the, the top two that are most important. Because we all like gifts, but some people like gifts more than others. We all like to be physically touched, but is that high on the list or not? We all like acts of service, but is it high on the list or not, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's not just how it's evolved, but it's like which ones have become more important or less important. Right. For me, physical touch was something that was extremely important in my entire life. And it's because I lacked it the way I grew up, mm-hmm. growing okay. up in foster care. Same here. Not having <coughs> real parents, uh, having multiple uh, parents. And with foster parents, you know, it's it's weird. Like, you, you don't know these people. Are they? Can they hug you? Can they not? Right. Uh, how long can they hug you before it's weird? It's just this whole thing. So I lacked physical touch almost my entire life. So that was very important to me. So when I would get into relationships, it was physical touch all day and every day. Now, it's like, I still enjoy physical touch. I still need that, but it's just a little less important to me. It's not as important to me now. Um, so and I, I think back like on acts that. of service is probably, probably for me. So acts of service is kind of leveled up through, through your life, and it's one of the primary two. Yeah. Okay. I piggyback on Larry. We're very similar in at least our upbringing. He said, I grew up in foster care, too. Mm-hmm. My parents weren't there, and I never had anybody really to really hug me or depend on or anything, at right. least not consistently. Right. So, you know, especially being an only child. And so when I finally got, you know, relationships, grew up and what have you, that was uh, something I had missed out on uh, quite a bit, knowing that somebody really loves you and really cares about you. Now, we're not talking about sex. No, no, You know, because no. there's a difference between intimacy with love and touch and then just sex. And so with that, and luckily, I, you know, I'm with a spouse now who will touch me and, you know, and again, nothing sexual or anything, just sit up there, hold my hand, just rub on me or something like that. The, now, the only way I've evolved is the one time I don't want my wife to touch me when we're arguing. <laughs> 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 she has a tendency, she'll be like, 
Orlando and want to touch my leg. I said, no, no, not now. <laughs> now I'm not willing to get up an argument. That's the one time. That's the one time I don't want to be touched. Abort when we're, mission. When we're going at it. When, when we're going danger, at it. real Robert. Yeah, danger. <laughs> but when I tell her not to do that, that hurts her feelings. And right. so I've evolved with that because that's one of the things is she's trying to connect with me. You know, when, I, when we used to argue, I treated her an argument like you are not my partner. You are my Adversary, not mm. enemy, not enemy, mm. adversary. Momentary. Yeah. Momentary. And we're going, but she said, no matter if we're arguing or we're loving each other or we really get into it, I'm always still your partner. And I mm. had to learn and understand mm. that. Wow. So for part of her love language, when she's trying, when we're not getting along, her touching me is trying to connect with me so we can at least keep it on a certain level where we can hear each other, even in those tense moments of, t- of going back and forth and, and the yeah. Whatever the cert, the thing we might be arguing about. Does that make sense? No, yeah. complete, Absolutely. complete, complete. I say for me, um, in the five love languages is uh, words of affirmation. Mm. How you speak to me, speak life to me, into me. That means more to me than anything else at this point in my journey. Mm. You know, in this world where we're beat up, we beat ourselves up. The voices in our own head, what we're thinking, mm-hmm. fear, anxiety, um, and just life. You need a cheerleader. And so I remember when I was going to launch the meeting planning company and I was wrestling with it. I was in deep prayer. I was waiting for signs and guidance and direction from the Lord. And we've all seen that Rocky movie where she's like, go out there and win. Right. And the it just clicked. The bell like, goes off. Right. He puts on like, a gray track it, suit <laughs> and he starts running. And all hundred kids start falling right. into the top of the yeah. Philadelphia, and it's like that motivated me when she said, "You can do this. Mm-hmm. You can quit your corporate job and you can go build this company." Mm-hmm. That's all I needed her to say. Mm-hmm. That she was in my corner with this idea. So when my wife speaks life into me, that's everything to me. That's that's all I need. I don't need a whole band of everyone. You, we all want support and, 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 and all that. But when she says, yeah, you can win, you can do this, mm-hmm. those words of affirmation is everything to get me through a week or a day mm-hmm. or a storm or just build confidence. She's in my corner. You know, right. we all need a cut man. Nothing like yeah. that. You yeah. know, somebody who's got your back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that that's everything for me yeah. where we where I've evolved. It used to be. The other things of uh, gifts and things mm-hmm. like that and and all that is larry's right we it all cycles and circles you know in and out but that's where i'm at right now okay it's words of affirmation what about you, Nate, dog? <laughs> for me you know my ex never cooked never learned to cook and i say when we got married i was a cook Mm-hmm. But I actually learned because eating out got expensive. Right. <laughs> right. She liked but the shrimp, white wine, expensive. fish, cheese, does. and all that, and <clears throat> lobsters and all. So I've watched YouTube and cook, served her, you know. And just the fact that she didn't even reciprocate, reciprocate mm. like, we'll start with boiling water. Oh, it's too hot. Just boiling water, you know. <laughs> Put an egg in it for seven minutes. You know how to use an apple timer? No, I don't. You know how to play Angry Birds, right? So do an apple timer. <laughs> So just the fact that she never did that, Mm -hmm. that uh, was definitely uh, hurtful to me and from Mm -hmm. a love language standpoint. Not the fact, cook me some, serve me, but it was also reciprocate too. So a little reciprocation, Mm -hmm. if I do this, goes a long way, which leads me to segueing into, I'm going back to the Filipino thing back at at the moving company before. When she heard that, she was like, oh, if you're mine, I'll cook. I know how to cook, and she started bringing oh. lunches to work. Mm-mm. So, because I didn't do it, and that sounds doesn't mean good. I'm guilty. Plot. But because they had a plot <laughs> <thing. laughs> sounds pretty good. But, sounds good. Story but, turns. but the other side of my shoulder was like, "Yeah, bro, you know she reciprocated." Oh, I see you yeah. doing the hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see y'all when they start doing the hands. Yeah, it's coming. Behind That's the like tree. a little spice sinister. Adams. <laughs> spice Adams behind, behind the tree with a yellow suit. Game over. Shout out to Spice. So, and the thing is, sometimes you connect with people outside of your house or outside of your spouse, whether it's a friend or coworker, that it just hits different than mm. with your wife. Like, sometimes your wife don't love the sports like you do, mm. but that other person at work, opposite sex, just naturally likes sports. So, in this case, that girl started bringing me food at work, and I'm like, good, I, I'll eat it. Hungry. 
But it started leading into some things. Of course where, it did. Yeah, I started connecting with her. An emotional moving and furniture, huh? An Nate, emotional affair. Y'all was moving yeah. furniture? Yeah. I'm like, I need Something help moving moving. this couch. An emotional affair. <laughs> 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 this black couch. But, uh, oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways. Aren't you Dominican? Anyway, and, go and ahead. And was she smelling good, Nate? Yeah, well, that, we call it sofa. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Nate. I can't stand, Nate, bro. Did, did she smell good? She smells good. Uh, Why are you asking? Uh, because th- this all sets it up. It does. It, does. it sets uh, it up. It smell good. The food smelled good. The whole nurturing, reciprocating was, I don't uh-huh. do nothing. But it, mm-hmm. wait, isn't there, it's, I've heard, I don't know where I heard it from, but it's like the 80-20 principle. Mm-hmm. And that 20% ends up being so bright in your life, being mm-hmm. 80% of the stuff your wife does. Mm-hmm won't register but someone else will come in your atmosphere another opposite sex will come in your atmosphere and that 20 percent your wife isn't providing Mm -hmm. this other individual ends up being a beacon so bright yeah. that it literally overshadows the 80% that your wife does do. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I think that's the one of the challenges, the slippery slopes. Mm-hmm. But no, sorry, I was interrupted. No, no, but no, that's, no, that's what that the just line, what your story the reminded got, me the 80-20 aspect. The line got blurry for me there. So I want to ask you guys, you know, since if you are married mm-hmm. and you guys been around too, mm-hmm. has that situation occurred and how would you navigate that? And I'll go into mine, but <laughs> the line definitely got blurry with me on that. Did I act on it? No, but I was guilty by the emotional thought too. Mm-hmm. Didn't well, have. I, you go ahead, because I got a lot to say. But I'm yeah. not, no, I, I don't. I, I'll be quick. That no, it has not happened to me. Okay, it has not happened to me. Plan to I'm. I am blessed. I'm lucky that it has not happened to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know everybody's story. You know, we some of us have similar. I didn't even know. I didn't know. Didn't remember that even that significant thing about Larry going through foster care that we had that in, in common. Yeah. Um, but when I was a young buck. I was ruthless with, when it came to women. I, you know, been with many a woman, mm-hmm. many, many, many a woman. So when I settled down with Michelle, I was actually ready to settle down. I was tired of just simple sex and moving on to the next one. Sex, moving on to the next one. <laughs> sex, moving on to the next one. So when Michelle and I hooked up at, what was I, 23 years old, I was done. Mm-hmm. I, I was tired. I was ready to settle down. Uh, I wanted somebody to have my back, <clears throat> somebody I can, you know, not a new face each every couple of nights in, 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 in my bed. And so I was exhausted of that that old lifestyle. I had matured and changed. Mm-hmm. So when we got together, we had some ups and downs trying to figure out our relationship. And even when we first hooked up, I had a couple of females that I was still seeing while we were dating. But I had to make some decisions. So when I graduated from San Diego State, boom, Michelle hit me. She's like, are you going back home to the Bay Area? Or are you going to stay down here and be with me so we can do something? And so I had that decision to make. Mm-hmm. I made the decision to commit, commit there right on the spot. I said, okay, I stayed. And we weren't even married or anything like that, but I, I was committed to her then because I was tired of the, the old the old stuff, and I'm still even to this day tired of that. So that part, thank goodness, because I had gone through so many you know, what do they call sold the, sold the royal oats? What do oh, they yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sold my royal oats yeah. many a time. I was done with, with doing that kind of stuff. So yeah. that, that doesn't phase me. So that's, that's my thing right there. I think deeper than just physical 80-20 scenarios that we're talking about, um, this one, this coworker of yours was providing an act of service that you really missed in yeah. your marriage. Mm-hmm. She was providing you a hot meal. And she was preparing it with love. And she smelled good. That can happen anywhere. <laughs> and she smelled good. Okay. Not like oatmeal raisin cookies. Okay. So we ain't doing that scent. <laughs> Me and Orlando are going to be. Right? I'm tired of him talking about something smelling good. No, but it's funny you say, the, the, you, the question you ask is a real one because we can get caught up in that 20% that, as Rome was talking about. But in hindsight of what I've looked back in my marriage, that 80-20 was all on me. A lot of marriages are reflections of us. Mm. Elaborate. Mm. Whatever. See, men are in a sacrificial role in a marriage as God ordains marriage. Men are head of house. Mm-hmm. Men are supposed yes. to minister to your wife and children. Yes. We're supposed to sanctify our wives with the word of God, yes. making her clean. Yep. If there's something your wife lacks, it's because we didn't show her. It's our responsibility. It's our, first, it's our responsibility. Yep. So when we look at that 80-20, that 20% is us. That 20% to make the relationship whole is through Christ and through us. And so we like to blame, point blame and say, oh, my wife's not doing this. My wife's not doing that. The Word of God talks about us loving our wives. Right. We got to blame the weaker vessel. The weaker vessel. Yes. So when you blame your wife for a lack thereof, 
Nate was cooking. He was demonstrating how to be acts of service, right. how to prepare for the home, how to cook and provide for the children. He was doing what he was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Which is that 20%? She just, she just didn't receive she didn't receive it, but he was <laughs> he was demonstrating that. So we so I've just learned in my walk, this isn't for everybody, mm-hmm. but when I was coming off the road and my wife made dinner but she didn't serve me. Mm-hmm. She was tired. Mm-hmm. I conquered the world. I was in a hotel every week. I was meeting with general managers and stakeholders and I look what I did. I brought home a buffalo. So I didn't pour into her. Mm. I didn't pour into the children. Mm-hmm. I wasn't there at honor roll ceremonies. So when we look at that, you have to do a self-examination on where are you in a relationship? What are you really ministering to, the world or to your house? Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times we assume our spouse has all the tools and the skill set to be 100. Nah, if we're not 100, how can they be 100? We ain't doing everything flawlessly around here. So just for me, once I learned the things I wanted my wife to do, I need to model that behavior, show her what that looks like. My whole marriage changed. It's not perfect, but it showed me I could do more mm-hmm. in ushering in that that relationship, that what I want to see from her. I need to show her how to do that. It didn't say women love your husband. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we get the role reversed. We're in this world. We're in this world where we look at life. What is everyone giving us? What have you done for me lately? That whole Janet Jackson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But she was right. <laughs> it's what have you done for me lately? Right. It's not. We never arrive. It's constant growth. Right. Evolution. Yeah. Um, evolving in so the relationship. I got it. So, so it's, 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 so you can get caught up. I want to hear your question, but we can get caught up in that shiny thing on the side that has that 20. They like the football game. They like Wu Tang. Mm-hmm. They like all these things that we like. Oh, you like what? <laughs> no, real talk. <laughs> has nothing to do with that 80 that really matters to your point. But I can take my wife to a Wu Tang concert and show her what I like. I can but take I think her to that, the ball that game. That becomes, and I'm using this as an example. It's an, in scenarios like that, mm-hmm. I'll spin it the opposite way. Spin it however you want to spin it. No, I don't, I don't mean spin it like, you know, but I'll say it this way. I know my wife has specific interests. Mm-hmm. And those interests aren't high on my, my priority or interest list, personally. Right. But I get it. I know I have to be there. Right. You better thank ma- you. Th- thank you. That was the best. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you. You better watch that chick flick. <laughs> You better take interest because guess what? If you're not, somebody else will. And I got to ask you, Rome, why? Why aren't they on your priority yeah. list? Why? See how selfish we are, though? No. Yeah. But no I, See how but selfish no, we wait, are because uh, it's not my interest, to? but we want them to take interest in, in our, our stuff. Yes. Because See, you, you brought up Wu-Tang, okay? I grew up, you know, uh, Cream and, yeah, you know, yeah, 36 yeah, Chambers course. and all that. Of course. I mean, like, but I could not, like, I could not be in the right mindset and be like, sweetheart, let's go to a Wu-Tang concert. Because I know she wouldn't go. Why That's, not? She wouldn't. It's not did her you, thing. Did you give her the opportunity? Uh-oh. Good question. See, we Ask assume. Right we assume. Uh, Are we you assume or do you know? Because if they're walking with you in life, why would you discount her? At least give her the opportunity to say no. Because then we, we dictate the whole relationship, and then we blame them for not liking Wu-Tang, but you never asked them to go. Sam, I don't think I answered your question. Did you ask her? No, he uh, I already know he did. We got. Mr. We don't need Rose a commercial right break there. for this. Please, we don't need. No, can you please answer Brother didn't. Sam's question? I did not, based on previous conversations and reactions. Well, we're, sp- we're referencing Wu Tang. I did not invite because she she openly acknowledges I don't like this I don't want why would I and it's okay. like okay, okay. well so, then if okay. I know so, that so, so why did. do I invite so my yeah. wife doesn't like football she could care less she'll watch the Super Bowl and that's about it she bought me tickets to a Niner game years ago because she knew I liked football right and she went with me to the game Kaepernick threw five interceptions the game was over by first quarter <laughs> it was the worst freaking Niner game of all time but she was with me at the tailgating. She was with me through the journey because she knew I like football. So sometimes we discredit our spouse because we think they're not watching or listening. Mm. They will, if you meet them halfway, at least introduce them and give them a shot. You might be surprised. She might have bought you Wu-Tang tickets, but you, 
You just I didn't just, give the opportunity. And so I think that's a, a, another thing we also have to now very similar similar to by the sound. But I mean, don't get me wrong, Wu Tang can be anything. Right. No, no, I okay, know. Okay, okay. I, know, I, get it. I was yeah. just yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Wu Tang. Yeah. Shout out to Wu Tang. And Michelle didn't understand football, didn't know about football, wasn't in the football. Michelle knows the game now. She knows what's happening. She'll be like a second down, eight to go. She'll know it's first and goal, second and goal, what happened. She knows what a touchback is. And she just learned last week because she asked questions now. They had a big yellow line Mm -hmm. on the screen. And she was like, what is that yellow line? I said, that's where they have to go at least uh, to make a field goal. Mm -hmm. they got to get to that line where it's permissible that they have the odds are that they can make a field goal. And she said, I learned football because I knew you were in the football. So I did Mm -hmm. what what you liked, and now she goes, I understand it, I dig it now. And and so that's the whole thing because of, because of us. But, gentlemen, if we don't reciprocate that, what does that say about us? To hear, honestly, a man of God or anybody say, what my wife likes is not top on my priority, I'd be a little bit concerned with that. No, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'm transparent no. right I here. I'm yeah. I, 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 I don't go by clear just because. Right. Like I try to be as transparent. Amen. I've acknowledged recently my own revelation by God's grace. I am selfish. I am selfish, and I have, and I'm working on it. Amen. But here's the thing: in that, in that selfishness, now that I'm aware of it, that's where the change can. That's take where place. you can make the change. Yes, yeah. but yeah. It, but that was so hard to even acknowledge that I am being selfish because. I, we'll call it out for what it is. I have a. My wife likes to crochet. Okay. What the? I don't care. Can she make me a niner blanket? And, she, and you would <laughs> love I want it. One. <laughs> I like one. Fine. Well, yeah. Cheryl, you're getting orders. You're getting orders. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Patriot just saying. Patriot. Patriot. Let's Patriot. pour into that. Sure. Wait, and, I, niners blanket, Cheryl. Wait, and I think that was the biggest thing. Is she, it was interesting because she's like, oh, this yarn's so thick and this needle does this and you can get certain stitches. And I'm just like, okay, sweet, cool. But over time, like it was, it, I just couldn't relate. I just couldn't see, plug into see, it. But did you try to? Hold on. And you know what? And the funny thing is I did. Okay. And that's where I ended up learning okay. to grow. For me, I, I believe it or not, I actually attempted to, to do like my that. own blanket. I, like I actually tried to I do like my that. own blanket. Yeah. And I failed tremendously. But now you appreciate her skill set. Right. And I do. And I and I respect it. Mm-hmm. And so but now when she's like, oh oh I'm gonna go, you know, so and so's having a baby and I'm gonna go crochet. I was like, you you got that. <laughs> but I know she's that good and that blanket's gonna be uh, like knitted with love. Absolutely. And passion. And it's like I'll re- and I will back that. A hundred percent. So imagine when we come home from the road and we're like, oh, I made this great present pr- production. And she's like, I don't know what camera that is. But she's still sitting there listening mm-hmm. to you mm-hmm. talk about a black mm-hmm. magic versus yes. a Sony. 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 Oh, yeah. Sony. <laughs> we go <laughs> to oh, like, you got the la- all this? And you got the latest MacBook yeah. and <laughs> why, all the RAM and the memory. Uh-huh. And she's, you're speaking a foreign language, but she sits yeah. there and takes it. Yes, because yeah. she's invested and in you. you. So maybe the perspective is different. We not uh, we need to take our eyes off ourselves and put them back on. We're here in service. Yes. It should be reciprocal. I, I've I, done I, my job, you guys. <laughs> be sure to tip your it waitress. Be <laughs> yes. no, See I, you next I, month. I understand. And Please I, tip and your I waitress. Agree with that, but I also think that we don't always need to share all of our interests. We just need to take interest in what our partner is doing, even if we don't share that interest. And so, like, for me, you know, um, my girl's into uh, makeup and astrology and all this kind of stuff, right? None of those things interest me almost at all. Maybe astrology because I think it's interesting to talk about, but I don't believe heavily in that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But I know that she does. So when she wants to have a conversation with me about it, I'm listening. I've learned about astrology, for example, just so I can have that conversation. It helps that I have other friends who are into it, so I kind of just know a little bit by proxy. Uh, With makeup, for example... Um, me being in theater, um, I've had to take makeup classes. Mm-hmm. I've put makeup on other people. I've put makeup on myself. Uh, but makeup is not a real interest of mine. But I know it's interesting to her. So I would get her, I would buy her gifts to like Sephora, is it Sephora or yeah, the Mac yeah, store, yeah, yeah. whatever it is. Um, so I would get her gift cards and stuff because I know that's those are things that she was interested in once upon a time. You about to ask a question? Yeah, no, I can say there's different aspects of makeup. Some things about makeup I didn't even understand when it came to makeup. I'm just saying there mm. could be some things that may interest you, especially you being in film and movies and production that goes mm. along with this. Michelle got into makeup. She did this cool thing, and some of you have seen this before, but she did this cool makeup thing, and I was like, holy smokes. And this was an aspect of makeup I loved. This is Michelle right here. Right. 
So there are aspects of, it, but some things we don't understand well, show, or consider. Oh yeah, so we got to show the camera so they, too. They can see <laughs> yeah. what she's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. but see that's, that's her. That's, that's makeup. That's, that's like that's that's, 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 that's nothing. But that's that's, 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 that's right. That's thriller. That's thriller. Yeah, I'm talking about like beauty makeup where you're you're, you're doing your eyelashes okay. and your all that stuff. I've had to learn again theater background, so I've had to right. learn certain uh, terminology about makeup. So I kind of know okay. that stuff, but it's not interesting to me. Is what I'm trying to say, and so. When she wants to talk about it, uh, she doesn't talk about it that much anymore, but I'm just saying when she wants to talk about stuff that I'm not interested in, I will listen. Okay. But I'm listening not because I'm interested. I'm listening because, one, it's important to her. Uh, and, two, I'm listening for cues because whatever interests her, there, there's opportunity there. You're thinking about, well, right. what, if she's interested in this, what can I give her for her birthday or for Valentine's mm-hmm. Day or for Christmas or whatever, gifts um, or whatever. I, and then... Other things just happen in life that come across. I'm like, oh, she she loved that because I'm I know she's interested in that. Even though when she's talking to me about, it, I'm like, I'd rather you know run into uh, a brick wall at 110 thousand miles per hour. This cat. I'm just I'm just keeping it one. I know I know. I'd rather set myself on fire. <laughs> I'd rather step on and glass heal. Lego pieces barefoot. Not, not the Lego. <laughs> what is, don't bash my Legos, bro. <laughs> Step on something else, just, a hot, a, a hot, hot wheel or something, a, a hot wheel, no, a like micro a, machine, or something a else, bed rail. Mm. a bed rail or something. Yeah, but, but, um, well, you talk about Legos one more time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> taking this whole my table fault, down. My fault, my fault. But you are <laughs> Lego profit. I know, <laughs> but no, my point is, we don't have to be interested in what our spouses or girlfriends are interested in. We don't have, and they don't have to be interested in what we uh, are interested in. But it's it's important to still listen. Um, and you're listening for, for cues. You're listening because you know that's important to them. And that, I think that's okay. You don't have to be interested in crocheting just because she is. I don't well, think no, you can ask for anything more than that. I think what you say is reasonable, Larry. I think that's, I think that's yeah. reasonable. Well, no, you said it's fine. But yeah. I want to get back to Nate's original uh, question, which was The uh, lines getting blurry. The lines getting blurry. So, so for someone like me, I have mostly female friends. Mostly. Uh, I mean, aside from you guys, I've got two other brothers that are my best friends. One of my best friends, she's a girl, right? Lisa. She lives all the way in D.C. I've been knowing her for 20-something oh, yeah. years. Yeah, right? I mean, you met Lisa, Lisa, right? Yeah. That's, my, that's cool. my ace, right? I love her to death. And I have another friend, Negace. She was uh, one of my mentors. Uh, and we. she's like an aunt, a mom, and mm-hmm. a big sister all rolled into one. These are women. Uh, I've have I have mostly women in my life. Just all all my bosses at work are mm-hmm. are, are mostly women. Um, I have most coworkers. Are women. Most of my coworkers are women. So yeah. I'm around women all the time. That's very similar to Sam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And so um, I've had female uh, roommates. One of my good friends, her Me name too. is Terrell. She uh, she's she loves sports. She's a Packers fan, so mm-hmm. she doesn't really like the Patriots that much, <laughs> yeah. uh, like a pa- like me. But we connect with football. I I love her to death, right? And mm-hmm. so we connect on on that level. I all I'm always connecting with uh, females. I have relationships with girls all the time, all over the place. Not romantic relationships, but I'm just saying because I know how you're looking at me when I no, say no, relationships. No, 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 <laughs> not going there. Not going I'm not, there. I'm, not saying I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you one. Okay, when you're right. ready. So, so I have relationships with with women because mostly women are in my life. Right. So there there isn't really that blurred line. Occasionally there might be because I'm like, man, I wish my girl was more like this, like Terrell. She's into football. I wish I, I want to be with a girl who's into football because that's something that we can relate to. But I don't allow those lines to get blurred. Not really. You know, you might have some interest and in, uh, the same interest as me in, in a certain thing, but that's kind of where it begins and ends. Mm-hmm. I don't really allow that because you have to, there's a thing called loyalty. Right. I don't know if y'all heard of it. But <laughs> <laughs> but you got to be loyal. You got to have standards. You mm-hmm. have to have boundaries. Right. And boundaries are very important. And I think some people don't have boundaries for themselves first and foremost. Mm, and so good. if you don't have boundaries for yourself, if you don't, if, there's a, if you don't have a line that you just will not cross, it's very easy for those lines yeah. to get blurred. Yeah. So you have to have boundaries for yourself. You have to draw the line in the sand and say, okay, we can be cool. We can hang out occasionally, but that's 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 where it's at. Right. Mm-hmm. Anything beyond that is, that's too much. Mm-hmm. And so whatever that line is for you, you have to make that boundary very clear for yourself first and then to the other person. That's important. Boundaries. I like that. Yeah. So, Absolutely. And loyalty, too. Like, because you, you're, if you're not a loyal person, mm-hmm. you're going to be all over the place. Because <laughs> it's very easy. It's very easy, you know, for, for people to cheat, to get away with stuff. 
it's just, it's just too easy nowadays to do it. So you have to really govern yourself. And yeah. I think that's the most important thing. I like that. Govern yourself. Well, that's big. What was your question, Orlando? Will you take those females around your lady? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Then then I, I don't see any issue with that. See, that's one of the things when we talk about those blurred lines. There's no relationship that I have, period, with a female that I won't bring around my wife. Exactly. They're all appropriate. There's nobody I can think of to right now and say, oh, no, I can bring such and such around her. That's going to that's gonna be a problem. Mm-hmm. But And females, let me be real clear, sometimes we as uh, dudes or as cats can be kind of naive. But we've had some other conversations before. One time Sam was part of one of them. Our ladies have intuition. And even though we may be homies with a certain female, they typically know when that female has other intentions for us. Even though we think we're we're just her friends and homies, right, she's, right. our ladies will be like, uh uh-uh, uh, I see something else is going on here. She has other intentions. So I think it's important that we also listen to things like that. And I know some of you have dealt with things like that. Like, I want to elaborate mm-hmm. on that because mm-hmm. female intuition has. Female intuition will have you guilty for some things you haven't done yet. Right, and I think that... Preach that shit, man. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to say that, but you go. No, but I think that's the thing. (laughs) Is it not naivete? Is it ignorance? Like, Or is it that we're just so focused on our goals that we aren't willing to see the unseen? And I I ask this because... I love that question. Because my wife has come up in certain events and said, something's not right about this. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I, like, there is no way there's anything. But with me and where I'm at, I'm tunnel vision. I, sometimes I refer to myself as an ostrich. I get so focused, like I don't, I don't look up. I don't, I'm just on the grind, mm-hmm. focused on what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And I won't let others around me affect where I'm going or how I need Facts. to execute. Facts. But I'm also, I think the word is um, oblivious to certain gestures or suggestions mm-hmm. and that others, a.k.a. my wife, would pick up on. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'm asking, like, how, how much stock, there it is, how much stock are you investing in your wife's intuition or your partner's intuition? I, I, I've learned my wife is majority right yeah, really. in those yeah. situations. But what majority. I subscribe to is a whole different thing. Like you just said, all your energy, all your focus, Mm -hmm. you're focused on your job. Right. Mm -hmm. You're focused on your family. Right. You're focused on your your craft. I'm loyal. (laughs) That goes without saying. Okay. So whatever she's seen is irrelevant to me at the end of the day because I'm not even subscribing to that channel. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not even, that's not even on my pick list. What she, what you're saying, what your wife sees is irrelevant to you. Yeah, because I'm not, because not to just, not to disarm her or discredit her. Or dismiss her. I'm focused. So why would that trip me up in the first place? I'm not spending time with that. I'm not going to that person's house. I'm not spending any energy. My, my focus is on where right. I'm focused. Right. So it has no effect. So what, on what no, she's exactly. seen could be real, but doesn't mean that that's where my attention is. So for so for example, if Sam Sam is so focused on his job on what he's doing. That this female coworker, she might have a little crush on him or something, mm-hmm. and then his wife might say, "You know that girl kind of dig you." Sam is saying, "Oh, is that why? You, you're probably right." But I'm so tunnel vision that frequency isn't even on my radar. Yeah. But that acknowledgement so that doesn't matter. That yeah, acknowledgement that you're probably right doesn't make it irrelevant. It said, "I've acknowledged it. You're probably right. He's aware of it, but not, his focus but is still he's good." Not dismissing I'm not her. dismissing her, but a lot of times you have to understand women intuition or insecurities could be a mix of both. Mix of both. Because they may be gauging someone else because they they are size whatever, or they can wear those that dress better, or their hair is pretty, and they think that's what I might like that moment mm-hmm. in that environment. Mm-hmm. So your insecurity, I can't subscribe to that. Because I'm focused on the job at hand. I'm focused on us. I'm loyal. All those things we talked about. I'm not saying she's wrong, but I'm right. saying, do, do I want to put much energy into someone that might like me? What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? I hear that. No. People, hear that. People, <laughs> people like people all over. You're going to see attractive people no matter where you no go in this world. You know, so will. if you subscribe to every narrative, oh, as she you, thinks you're cute. Oh, you, she's mm, looking at we'll you. Mm-hmm. And you can't control that. Yeah, and, and, and so I remember once upon a time when we first joined our church, there used to be a certain woman that used to stare at my wife all the time. And she was like, why is she staring at me? 
she was insecure to thinking that her, whoever she was with might like the way my wife looked. That really? had nothing to do with her husband. That had nothing to do with the scenario at hand. Nothing's ever happened. But see, we can subscribe to that wrong channel mm. because of what they feeling at the time. Mm. My and wife was running into that too. Yeah, yes. so you can't, you can't paint. At the church. You can't spend <laughs> too much energy in that space right. because it's not healthy for anybody. But we now have I'm to, walking around on eggshells around this woman because my wife thinks you like me. And that's what problems sometimes. Some that doesn't that make any sense. Is now a problem. Oh, yeah, you're okay. putting energy towards it. Now I'm looking yes. at them different. Like, oh, maybe she do the way she, you know, bat her eyelash. Oh, I see it now. It maybe she has something be, in her eye. It would only become a problem if you allow it to, yeah. and if you subscribe to that frequency. If you, if you, not if you don't acknowledge it, but I'm saying if you, if you go, oh, that is, oh, she do like me. Oh, well, sure, how you doing? That's where the problem starts. Mm-hmm. The Open. problem doesn't. So you just, if you put that to the side, I'm not even focus on that. I'm tunnel vision, baby. I'm focused on what I'm here to do. Mm-hmm. Period. And that goes back to your character. Hundred percent. It's really, it's really about your you character. at that moment. Because here's the thing. No, I, I, I know you. You, you have, you have control over yourself in that sense. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Agree. You don't so have control. I, I can't over, blame the. But my girl ain't got control over what I do or don't, and vice versa. I ain't mm-hmm. got control over what she does or doesn't. Who she is and who I am is that's our character. Right. Mm-hmm. So if we, if I want to go out and sleep with a bunch of women. That's that's my character. Yeah. Right. And so I have to deal with those consequences and vice versa. So instead of trying to control other people, because that's the problem. That's control. the problem that we have is control. We're trying to control something that we can't. And there, there, that's where anxiety comes from. Mm. That's where insecurities mm. come from. Yeah. That's where fear comes from. Trying to control something you can't. And that's why, what's the, what's the number one thing in the Bible that it says? Do not fear. Do not fear. And, and God has control. That's why he's saying don't. Don't Don't fear each other. Don't I got you. And so that's why you'd have to tell our women, do not fear. I I got you. I'm Uh, here. mm -hmm. Trust in my character. Trust in my ability to be loyal. Trust in my ability to make good decisions. Mm -hmm. Because when you don't trust that, that's saying you don't trust me. You don't trust my ability to make good decisions. You don't trust my character. You don't trust my loyalty. And so you're trying to control this so that you don't get hurt. So you don't get bamboozled. So you don't feel like you're losing something. That's on you. And it's on us to be, remain loyal and all that stuff. I'm just saying, when we try to control something that we can't, that's on us. And I, I would think from a, sometimes. I would think yeah. from a different perspective. And too bad we don't have any females here. But I've, I've t- me and my wife had this. We just spoke about this the other day. She said it's not an issue with me trusting you. It has nothing to do. This part has nothing to do with you. My wife said I know how other women are. I know how they think, and I know what they, what what women do. She goes, I'm a woman. I know what women do. Right. She goes, the issue is not you. The issue is her. Or hold on, let me finish that. I have an issue with that, but go ahead, let them finish this point. And so they feel if it's not addressed, if this woman who has a crush on you, whatever situation is, even though you're not going to act or anything like that, they feel disrespected that the woman is still batting her eyes or doing whatever as a way to lure you, even though nothing's going to happen. Now, from a male perspective, my wife wife had a, a friend who was a homie who was the homie, and she'd known him for years. This cat, knowing we were together and everything, known him for years, he actually tried to pull something with my wife, and she didn't tell me for years. And I asked her. I was like, hey, whatever happened to such and such? What happened? And I knew she got kind of weird. She got kind of weird. And then she said, one day she said, you know, let me sit you down. Let me tell you what's going on. And she goes, the reason I didn't tell you, because I knew what you would have done. Mm-hmm. Okay. I said, I trust you. Yeah, there's no She goes, and I handled it. But I knew. If I would have told you it been all what would have happened, I said, it was probably right you didn't tell me because I would have heard him. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't about me not trusting my wife or having any any kind of doubt in her. It was him. And he disrespected me in my own house. Mm-hmm. I get in it. In my own house. I and so it. that's where they're saying it from. It's not typically about us. It's about those who, who just, just even the appearance of impropriety makes it mm-hmm. very, very... Uh, dangerous for them or they see it as, as a big issue i think that's Go big ahead, man Sam. i think that's big i think the key thing is your wife handled it mm-hmm. so allow us to handle it mm-hmm. see, let us shoot it down Again. that way they know the doors forever closed see, but if you answer to every objection every hand that agreed. gets raised in the audience agreed. you'll be here all day agreed. fielding calls on situations yeah. that aren't even worth spending time on right. mm-hmm. that that woman on. might like you she may be lusting after you but it may pass <laughs> right. it, it could pass. It, in most cases, it does. And so I think we just have to be careful of 
we should consider what they're saying. Hear it, absolutely, and then and then, and then you just be and then every time you're around yes. them, bring your wife around. Yeah, there you go. Don't go to the there party you by yourself. There you go. If you know they're gonna be there, all those different scenarios that you can control. Right. Um, and then you know involve your wife in the discussion. If you got to go talk to so and so, bring your wife along. Say, hey, we were talking about you, blah blah blah, and that way they know there you, you two are united at the hip. Mm-hmm. There's no opportunity here. Keep it pushing. Yeah, listen, 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 until proven in, guilty. In, in the perfect until, world. Until. Until that person has proved otherwise, you should trust them. You guys are hitting way too close to home. Reason I brought up that subject because yeah, what happened, Nick? Yeah, my ex. Yeah. It, it, uh, it came down with that. Okay. So okay. with all the Lifetime movies and <laughs> back on Lifetime. Yeah, back oh, on Lifetime. Get us canceled, <laughs> bro. Before we get started. <laughs> Lifetime got no guys, they gonna legal up. <laughs> Lifetime go Come on, man. You get to change it up. This Stop bashing on Lifetime. By Lifetime. But they turn off my cable provider, <laughs> then my wife gonna be mad at all of us. <laughs> you know who's streaming? Who's streaming? <laughs> I ain't paying for that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so with all that intake she was taking in, what we watch and what we speak, it gives it power, at least in her reality, mm-hmm. and it tried to suit her narrative. So even though initially I wasn't even looking that way, wasn't even trying that way, but in her head I was guilty of infidelity, no matter what. It got to the point where she even called my parents over to meet at the bar at Agua, mm-hmm. talk about it, and my dad, he's... Uh, he, he had his past. She back got your parents involved. She got my parents involved. Wow. Hey, first it was her mm. friends, and you know how it is. Yeah. You're, you're, look at everyone's looking like you need <laughs> social distance, dog. I like wish it's nigga would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish a nigga would. But my mom was all like, "No, that ain't my son. I know my son." And my dad's like, "Do you have proof?" No, I, I drop it. So my dad put me to the side, and my dad was a ladies' man back in the day. He's like, son. Rest in peace, Mr. Hache. Exactly, mm-hmm. rest in peace. So he pulled me to the side. He's like, Nate, is that true? You did it? No. So you getting convicted of it, and you didn't do it? Nope. Man, you stupid. You should have done it then. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Hey, sorry. Rest in peace, Dad. Uh, uh, yeah. Probably bad feedback. <laughs> I believe that's bad feedback. Very bad feedback. Bad feedback. But, but I get his point, you though. You should have well, did it. Where it got well, because he's convicted. Because he's already convicted. Because I, no, 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 I spent no, time no, in jail for a crime I didn't commit. I should have just committed it then. <laughs> no, and I'm, I'm not, not, not condoning it, but that's his thought process. Double Jeopardy. You've seen the movie. Double Jeopardy. I can't be guilty twice. Yeah, you can't be charged for the same. But here's where toxicity came because it didn't suit her narrative. So one day at the movie camp, we had an emergency meeting or a staff meeting with all the staff at six in the morning. So I woke up extra early, left, forgot my phone at the house. Oh, Filipino thing texted me. Are you coming to the meeting? So my wife, or my ex-wife wakes up, sees the text message, looks at the phone. But this is work related. She texts you. Yeah, Are you coming come to, to the, the meeting. meeting. Exactly. She don't know that, though. Yeah, she don't know. She's over here like, I'm just going to stir up some stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm coming to the meeting. Will you be there? Well, yeah, I'll be there. What are you doing after work? Oh. No, but see, no, oh. no, 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 see, no, see, no. See, no. See, no. See, uh, let, let me finish. Oh, let no. me finish. She uh, let us, set, let's hear the rest of the story. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting pissed. <laughs> yes. We so she, so get the story. Story. Like, there is no reason for her to pick up your phone. Yeah, oh, know, my God. God. <laughs> I will. Like right. woken up, y'all. Mother effer would. I want to hear the rest of this. How does this end? What are you doing after the meeting? I'm going home. Okay, you want to come over for dinner? My ex acting like me. So she was like, well, <sighs> you're married though. Yeah, but my wife will be at work. So you want to come over or what? She See? setting you up. Yeah. Like, oh. and she does said this? And she said, yes, what time? And you that blew the whole room No, off. wait. I'm out of here. <laughs> No, I don't get this oh, stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. she's setting you up for the she, slaughter. Is that what that's what clearly the trust was She's there. supposed to be your helpmate. No, she clearly was, the trust wasn't there, Ron. No, yeah. clearly the no, trust wasn't there. Sorry, <laughs> this is <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Clearly, the trust I, I, on there. Larry, no, no, I, I that's love you, dog. the second dog. time in my life I heard wrong. Yeah, yes. yeah, he doesn't no, normally curse no, no, people. He Larry, doesn't normally do that. Larry, you're like, oh, he's, you know, why I'm getting 20 questions. Is this woman setting you up? Why you think she's an ex-wife? Then? She was not a partner. Yeah. So, she was hey, not a partner. y'all people. No. So that was me dealing with toxicity. I know you guys have healthy relationships. Facts. 
And what you guys were back then when you got married as husbands and wives, mm. you guys were not the same. You guys evolved. Evolved, yeah. That relationship could not evolve. Even though I gave the relationship I heard four years. I almost want to shed a tear for you, bro. Yeah, hey, like, it's probably for the better. It's probably for no, the better. No, I was going to just say, it, 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 like, that needed I'm to happen. For you. Yeah. That needed to happen. No, how did she go through that? I slept in a separate room for three weeks. There you go. Didn't want, and then she tried to, like, and the thing is, she never apologized for that. Her way of apology back then was, let me throw some, let me throw some taco at you, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. You know? Hey. And I'm like, I don't want the taco. Fuck that pink taco. Yeah. So keep that. <laughs> keep, exactly. Well, she, she's like, well, you know. It's you, contaminated at this yeah. point. Mm-hmm. So that's what I, I would have still hit it. <laughs> hey, I hit it three weeks later. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> the the yeah. intimacy would have begun, but the act... And then no, say la vie. No, that that, that's, that's, that's it. That, that would have been that, it for me. That wasn't yeah. the turn because it's self sabotage yeah. to yeah. Rome's point. Yeah. And and if there's no trust, and you know. we've all been in a position where we didn't trust each other or been trusted. Yeah. Um, that that's that's that, what that's, hurts. That, the trust, yeah. lack of trust. It's a unity. If there is no trust, yeah. but but that. but the fact <laughs> is yeah. though, she was right in that situation. Sam, what? Because the, hear hear me out. Yeah, I gotta hear this. Hear me out. She already felt insecure. Right. So she's going to try to make sure she's not crazy. Oh, the girl took the bait. The girl so, took the bait. So when she, Nate left his phone, she tested the waters. And he Nate does. did give a positive response to the encounter. We have to be accountable as men. We can't just say it one way and act like we're immune or we're innocent bystanders. Okay. He said, what time do you want to meet up after work? No, he didn't say that. I didn't that. say that. My ex texted her that. I know. Yeah. But, oh, so she was texting your the girl yeah, at work? Yeah, exactly. Not you. you like right. Me. Like me. She's on his phone. Yeah, the yeah. wife was doing this. Thank doing you. Like, well, that's different. Then. That's yeah. like, Because um, then she's, but of course the girl that's why likes you. we do this you. podcast over coffee because it was unfiltered, you know, drinks. Yeah, right. that's that's hits different. Because that has nothing to do with you. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. like you said, yes, I want to meet yeah. her. No, her. no. Her. She was testing the girl to see yeah. if she yeah. liked you. Yeah. That's sabotage. Yeah. Always Yeah, that. That, that, that's, that's, that's out of bounds. Like, I'm sorry, Sam. I, got, I, I, that's I, can't, it, yeah. I can't just let that rest. Like, <laughs> I, I'll i say it bold and proud. No man should be sabotaged like that yeah. when he is faithful, loyal, yeah. And willing to serve his family. This brother cooked for you. <laughs> I'm Rome hurt. <laughs> Yo, Rome hurt. Yeah, Rome is. And it wasn't oatmeal man cookies. Down. Man down. It was not no oatmeal No oatmeal, oatmeal cookies. Well, Nate was going over there because it, it wasn't oatmeal raisin cookies. It was cookies. scraps with white wine sauce and oregano. Some garlic, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it was, yeah, that, that's that's out of bounds. The, yeah. the text a co worker, yeah. too, that's, that could mess I'm up sorry, your job and all those yeah. other things. I'm, yeah, after, after y'all got divorced, Me? did you hit it? No, no I can't, I can't, Orlando, hit it. I can't, why I can't, hit it. you focus on that. <laughs> I'm just curious. You know how you should have asked that because question? Because just like his, what, what his father just, said, what yeah. his father said, you should have did it. I'm just curious after you guys, no. after you guys I split, did this. you finally? I will say this because I was not as um, obedient to the word as I am now. Fair enough. Or Fair enough. at least learned on it. I always believed God existed, but right. I wasn't read in it. Yeah, after I served the papers and initialized it and then we we're going through that petty process. Yeah, I did reach out on Instagram DM. <laughs> I reached out. Even when we were married, she at she wanted she requested me to be added her friend on on Facebook. I couldn't do it because mm-hmm. my ex was right. on that. Right. So she's like, I understand. So I reached out on DM. Turns out she don't even live in the state no more. So mm-hmm. if she were live in the state, who knows? Right. Okay. Who Fair knows? enough. Who knows? And that's real. Yeah. And that's I real. did reach out. That's real. Okay. And even Sam, when um, even Sam, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, hold up, hold up, wait, wait. come on, Orlando, bro. You we don't, <laughs> please. I'm not sure where it was going. You're gonna have my Nate dog come out <laughs> yeah, for real, yeah, yeah, Nate. Yeah, yeah. No, this is Nate being Nate. So even when open ass every day, <laughs> <laughs> go to church every day. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> Better pray every day. <laughs> so before I got married, I lived in a. So before I got married, I was living in a detached casita at Rancho Rod. Where Sam where Sam visited, he's like, oh man, he gave her the nickname, the Honeycomb Hideout. Nate had the wow. yeah. Honeycomb yeah. Hideout. Honeycomb yeah. hideout. Yeah. So he would joke with Keisha like, hey, if you get mad at me, throw me out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going over to Nate's. I'm going to Nate's. <laughs> Nate had the for, back cave. And for my dad's 70th birthday, Honeycomb Hideout, backyard pool, barbecue okay. outside, pool table, open bar. It still exists? 
It still exists. You, you still I, got access? I, I, yeah, I still do. Does Pete oh, Herman still have eyes, his bike? I still <laughs> Does Chuck E. Cheese still smile? <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese is trash, by the way. Hey, don't be banging on my oh, Chuck E. Yeah, Cheese, bro. Chuck E. Cheese no. pizza. What's wrong with Chuck E. Cheese? No, first of all, it'd be dirty in there, bro. They don't clean the bar. Well, I ain't been there years. So I, I don't want to take beers. my niece and there. I took your kids there. What you talking about? I took their kids there, bro. Be careful what you say that I'm going to check that they don't got no. Let's get back to Sam going to the Honeycomb Hideout. Good Lord. No, for my dad's 70th birthday, we did have a. Celebrate their belly dancers. At the st- belly dancers. Belly oh, yeah. dancers got turned. Everybody needs that. Yeah. You got turned. You had a belly dancer? We had two Did belly, belly dancers. Oh, two. Okay. Two. I, I didn't know you back then. Interesting. Oh, yeah. you know probably for the best. Larry was I would have probably got 75 mm. girls pregnant back then. Oh, my. <laughs> no, it would have been 87 back then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> I'm joking, bro. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm just jokes. <laughs> I pull out. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's keep this PG-13. Uh, uh, <laughs> What? I, I would love for my boys to eventually you go back ne- and listen question. to this. Next next question. Question. You know, our significant yeah. others may be listening to this next question. letter. Let's go from Honeycomb Hot to Honeycomb. I just want to visit. I just want to drive by. I wanna... No, no you, you don't need it. No, you you don't need, no. you don't need Larry. it. You drive by, you go Larry's to the Larry. shower after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Larry's Larry. Larry <laughs> may not. <laughs> yes. He may not leave. <laughs> I just well, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's got a pool. I'm gonna stay in the car. It's got everything you want: pool, barbecue, back. Secret entrance. You don't need. Now, you don't need. No, wait. Like, I'm have just gonna put Larry this out today? there. Now that we talked about this, mm-hmm. you know, I'm never allowed at your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, this is not. This is not. This is old pad. Oh, the old pad. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. This, is, this ain't the new. He got house, kids now. Your house is kid friendly. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Back then, it was making kids friendly. But see, all bad. No, all bad. Dot com. It was all good. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So no, back then, some would joke. Keys, you gonna get mad at me? Put me in the honeycomb. So anyway, so after the divorce happened, mm-hmm. there were times where, yeah, I, I hit her up on DM. She's in another state. Right. So I was going on this, well, hey, I'm just going to live my life, dating phase, you know, okay. doing whatever. As you should have. And there's times where, remember that one time I ran into you and Keisha at the nest? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gaming? Yeah. Just by coincidence. And mm-hmm. who was I with? The moving company. No, no, it was not the moving company, Chick. It was... Um, <laughs> I, was I, don't, a, I don't know. I don't like name. that laugh. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, that <laughs> Sam, Sam don't remember. So who was it? <laughs> I, I, well, I didn't her. know her name. I didn't okay. know her. No, so yeah. I know what she looked like. The yeah, Asian yeah. Vietnamese girl. Asian uh, Vietnamese. Girl. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Asian Vietnamese girl. Yeah, Vietnamese. Okay. Yeah, we call Asian Vietnamese. Okay, that's fair. Double entendre. Yeah. So Sam was seeing. Are you Asian Vietnamese? That's a Vietnamese. You're an English Brit. What are you saying? I don't understand. <laughs> you a black nigga, I'm, huh? <laughs> oh, Larry, Larry, you too bad. Go ahead, finish the thought. Finish the thought. Lord, Larry, y'all all going on my prayer list Larry, for tomorrow Larry's worship Larry. service. <laughs> yes, Larry, is first Larry. and last name. <laughs> you you can't say you I need your middle initial. I need your first middle oh initial and last name for altar call tomorrow. But that oh, phase I went through with her. Because it was perfect timing. I right. was divorced, she was divorced. Right. But was it right according to the word? Absolutely not. It wasn't. But why did I do it? I did it because all that accusations of being innocent, mm. at least trying, like, let me show you how to cook, let me show you how to love, mm-hmm. let me, you know, stop gambling because it's mm-hmm. really putting the strain. And what kind of got me after we had that sushi meeting was when I read in Matthew, when you could divorce your wife, I think it's Matthew chapter 17. Yeah. It's where it's... Um, adultery has to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the only That's way a divorce mm-hmm. can happen is adultery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, to this day, I don't know if she committed adultery. And I'm still trying to justify it where, okay, she was committing adultery because you love that slot machine more than you mm-hmm. actually wanted to. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a different kind of adultery. Yeah, okay. It is. Okay. Mm-hmm. It is. okay. Or all these accusations. Why are you so focused on me trying to commit with this one or try to do the act when... Are, what are you doing now? That's that's mm. sometimes yeah. projection. Projection. Sometimes that can be. Yeah. That, okay. The person who cheats oftentimes will blame the wife on cheating. Are you cheating on me because they know they're cheating? Exactly. So she so could have been projecting. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Guilt trip too. Why are you stirring up all them text messages right. pretending to okay. me? What are you doing? Like, yeah, mm-hmm. are you softening the blow on you? So it's stuff that hit me mm. after the fact. And after having sushi with you guys a few couple weeks ago, it kind of revisited that. And I'm not saying I'm having attraction to her because. She will go back with me in a heartbeat if I wanted to. She's hinted it. She's offered it. She's even begged, like, I'll pay you to go for another hook. I'm like, no, I know you too well. And I know your body too well. You ain't the type to, let's done. 
and that was back then. Now I can't do it because I just there's some times where it's talking to her. It's like when we hang out with the kids together, the first hour and a half, it's cool. It's mm-hmm. whatever. After that, it feels like stepping on Legos. I got to drop you off. Yeah. See, yeah, Legos yeah. again. Yeah, Legos <laughs> leave my Legos alone, y'all. Hey, listen. We're having a deep conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This podcast mm-hmm. is brought to you by Legos. <laughs> <laughs> Don't step on them. Don't step on them. <laughs> So, no, that's deep, Nate. I mean, thank you for your transparency yeah, yeah. in where you are because, you know, you still might be grieving that marriage. I don't know. Um, maybe it's just, like Larry says, I can't stand you, bro. I can't stand her. <laughs> so that don't, that don't sound like grieving marriage. Well, but he said he was he was considering how they could work through it because he never really proven he didn't divorce no, her I, for I, the I biblical say, reason. That's why he's, he's talking about that. I would that. say consider it convicted me. In a way, because like almost mm. like you're growing now, but back then, did you really exhaust all your options? Mm-hmm. That's the only thing it was. Okay. So I still have no attraction to her like that. She is the mother of my kids. There's no way around it. And whoever is in my life later on, that's just a matter of fact. Okay. It is what it is. But um, it's almost like when I go on a date now, yeah, I got two kids. I have to say that first date. Yeah, yeah as you, you know, should. I'll, I'll wait kids for the are beautiful, fir- bro. I'll wait, yeah. for, I'll wait for them drinks to circulate. Oh, you right. Lucy, I got kids. Ah, okay. <laughs> 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 <So> <laughs> <laughs> All right, we good now. Right. Um, <laughs> so hey, I'm no, not, I'm proud of you being transparent, I'm, though, because, alone. you know, some people, and I, I could say this, there are some men who will just, though they've stepped up to take the responsibility yeah. and, and lead their kids, they when they go out, they hold them on the back burner. Yeah, you know, you have to. So I, I commend you, yeah. and I'm proud of you for Thank being you forthcoming with that information. Mm-hmm. Because kids, they are, they're anchors. They keep yeah. us grounded. They keep us real, oh, and they sure. keep us in childlike faith. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Definitely. I got to raise them up that way. It's biblical, too. Okay. So it brought, brings me up to my next question, because even though I'm still, I'm not saying struggling with it, it's just kind of reflect, reflected on my part as a man, is love conditional. Or is it unconditional? Mm. Love is absolutely <clears throat> conditional. Yeah. Okay. Conditional. Conditional. Let, let's yeah. Hear. conditional. Let's hear. Wow. Let's hear. Oh. Let's hear. Let's hear. Let's hear. We weren't here when we talked about that over sushi. Yes. I had, no. to, convince, I had to convince these dudes that it, love is conditional. I'll convince you in a second. Let's conditional. Hear. conditional. Let's hear. Okay, that's interesting. Let's conditional. Hear. Let's hear. Uh, I want to hear. Okay, love of conditional, plain and simple. Uh, unconditional love, I don't think it's even real love has conditions you can't beat me you can't just cheat on me you can't just uh treat me in an old kind of way call me bitch or hoe or, or anything like that that those are all conditions and when it comes to the marriage uh, mm-hmm. mutual respect um putting in putting out everything that goes along with that these are conditions as to which we married and even the what you said when you spoke about matthew on certain terms to get divorced or splitting up there you go there's the conditions right there True. um certain yeah. things that if my wife <clears throat> and she doesn't if she were to do certain things there ain't no way in the world i'm gonna be with her plain and simple okay. if i do certain things i start going inside her head mm-hmm. i start calling her names and treating her any old kind of way I'm not going to be in that marriage. But love, the, the marriage absolutely has conditions. Our love, I may, I may still love her or anything like that, but I don't care how much I love you. You disrespect me, you treat me a certain kind of way, peace, Yeah, gone. I think the only love that is unconditional is the love that Christ has for us. Agreed. True. Period. And uh, you can make an argument for the love that we have for our children. Now, right. I don't have kids. Uh, all of y'all have kids, kids. at the table, mm-hmm. right? So imagine the love for your own children that you have. That's unconditional. Right. Your kids can say something, do something, or whatever, and you might be upset, you might be angry, you might be disappointed. A wide array of emotions might come come by, but that love you have for them is is unconditional. Mm-hmm. That and Christ, that's it. Every other relationship that we have comes with conditions. Absolutely, it comes with conditions. Because if you don't, if you're not doing the things that I got into this relationship mm-hmm. to, you know, for, what's the point? If I start hitting you, I mean, even our love, right? right? I mean, I love you. You're my brother. Yeah. How long before we're not brothers if I start disrespecting your wife? Mm. Oh. You won't be living. There you go. <laughs> right? There's there you go. So there's that's a condition. There's a condition. I was like, I didn't mean any disrespect. That's, this, this, just, this, I mean, this proves you put our me point. You right. I was like, you hey, mean, I don't you care. Mean, exactly you what you said. Don't back right now. Our point. <laughs> Love has conditions. No further got, questions, Your Honor. Thirty-eight seconds to the run. defense oh, sorry. rest. Go ahead, right? Prosecution rest. No further questions, Your Honor. No further questions. So I'm just saying, how long before I get, okay. I, you know, 
and I say it maybe you no know, we all we all follow Christ we all know whose we are so as we as we follow Christ Christ provides unconditional love no matter what our mistakes and shortcomings and if we are following him and we are to act like him love love our, is con- unconditional I but that does not mean mm. you should be disrespected there's a separate difference from all right you made those choices. <laughs> Homegirl chose to pick up his phone, chose to make those text messages. There are consequences. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. But there's in time, because we are all human, yeah. there can be forgiveness. I didn't say right now. Yes. Uh, and agreed. in that due time, I can love you as Christ from love a distance. Love the church. Yes. I can love you through my kids because you're the mother of their children. Right. You're, you're their mother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's unconditional. So maybe we could rephrase it to Deep. relationships. Uh, that's that's just the word. Are, un- uh, are conditional and maybe love is isn't. You could say and that. I'll respect that. I'll get behind. I'll stake because my flag are, on that. There are, there are women who in my past who I love still. Mm-hmm. I'm not like, off, you know, having butterflies in my stomach. No, no. But there is a general love because we shared you know, for a period of time, we shared something there. Right. Mm-hmm. So I love them and care about them in a general sense right. because something was there. But I can't be with them. Right, right. but that's... Right. The, right. Wait, okay. I'm not and, even and, remotely and, interested. Right. These two, and I, not, and, I, and I say this, there is a, this word, it's called agape love. Agape, agape. love. Yeah. Okay, that, that love transcends yeah. beyond, mm-hmm. okay? The love that you're talking about is situational. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Break it down. Mm-hmm. And for me in my world, mm-hmm. me in my house, mm-hmm. we follow the Lord. So for mm-hmm. those reasons, as he showed love to me, I have obligation because I serve him. Mm-hmm. I am his servant. Mm-hmm. I have no problem showing love. So, okay. So let me just paint a scenario for you because I'm with you and I believe you. Okay. Um, and I not just believe, but I agree. But how long can you tolerate a behavior before a change needs to be made despite how you must so love that person? So Rome has set the bar. Mm-hmm. It's the bar is Jesus Christ. Yes. And because Jesus Christ is the bar, is the standard, he's forgiven us too many times for us to even count. No, forgiveness is one thing. But and that's I'm part of that. but that that's part of love. Okay. I that understand. you can't but you you're can't take with the tolerance. The tolerance. I, I understand what you're saying in a physical oh, right. real, real relationship kind of man and woman Sam. partners. I know what you're saying. But he set the bar. I can't Take Jesus out. No, I'm no, not. No, no, no. Hear, hear me out. One second. Hold on. Right, if Sam, you and me are brothers. If I hit you in the face once, you'll forgive me. If I hit you in the face twice, you might forgive me and be like, "All right, bro, you're pushing." If I hit you in the face a third time, we can't. You might love me from over here, but I, we can't have a relationship. Can't deal with you. That's yeah. different. Because I keep hitting you I in may the face. I may love you, but I may not like you. Yeah. But then, but can we maintain? You can forgive me though, but can we maintain a friendship? How long before uh, so, our friendship okay. is so I'm a, I'm a, that, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, My behavior I, I, isn't changing. I'm going to go, I'm a go so deeper. So there's no love reciprocated. I'm going to go. My beha- with love comes behavior change. Sorry. With love comes behavioral change. What What's unfortunate with these scenarios, because you're not wrong in your scenario that you're painting. Okay. We often like to let people dictate our character based on how they're treating us. Okay. And that's unfortunate. Yeah. No one should ever take you out of your character on what God has put in you to usher in his spirit Mm -hmm. i don't like my father but i love him Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he keeps punching me in the face Mm -hmm. he keeps throwing me away Mm -hmm. but i'm still supposed to honor him according to the word of god 100 there's accountability on that because it says don't bring anger to your children Mm -hmm. he's made me angry Mm -hmm. tenfold Mm -hmm. but i have to still honor and love him so when you give me that scenario you punch me in the face yeah i've been punched in the face by my own father Mm -hmm. But I still love him. So that goes into that conditional, unconditional. Even though the conditions are not pr- the right conditions for me to be in a loving environment with him, mm-hmm. I have to love him at a distance. Mm-hmm. But that means I still have to love him. I still have to honor well, him. see, that's kind of my point. You said at a distance. But that doesn't because, mean I don't love him, though. But you, you're distancing yourself because you can't tolerate him. Because behavior. it's not safe. But that doesn't mean I don't love him, though. Yes. But see, to okay. me so right that's, now. So that okay. is unconditional. Mm-hmm. Because if I just base it off of. I only like people that only give me hugs. That's not the way to walk through this life because it's not realistic. You're going to have conflict with people. You're going to have conflict with yourself. To Orlando's example, of course, a marriage may not last Mm -hmm. 
it doesn't mean he stops loving her Agreed. because of how she's treating him mm-hmm. or potentially could have been treating him in that scenario. So the point is, once Rome raised the bar to the standard of Jesus Christ, because he forgives us through well, every scenario yeah. that we do. I didn't raise it. I, it was set. Yeah, it was already but, set. But you brought it and to the table. I okay. Glory okay. 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 to God, but you brought, it, you brought it to the conversation. Okay. So once you go to that standard of that standard, there is no other way to go. Right. It's but, his. St- it's his standard. It's but, how he built. Yeah, I want to hear. Like, I want to hear. Christ Orlando. has those limitations because it even talks about the Bible, the unforgivable sin when you disrespect the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy, Bingo. Blasphemy. Bingo. Yeah. So he, that's a that's that a separate separate you, right there. That separates you from God. Correct. I, was, yeah. I will say and I never. I never knew you. Right. And, and so we are talking me. about what Rome said. I agree. That is the standard. But they, we're talking about a perfect love. Mm-hmm. Our love. He we always fall. God, we always yeah. fall short in the, in the eyes of God and well, our love and our forgiveness, yeah. everything that goes yeah. along with that. Mm-hmm. And so I admit to my perfection, my imperfections. I try to be transparent. Unlike you, I don't love my father. My father's never been there. I, my father, we're all black men. Especially black men have been stereotyped of mm-hmm. not taking care of their kids, not doing mm-hmm. those things. My father is the stereotypical black man. He never took care of me or my sister. He had to be forced to pay child support. He's never been in our lives. And we just got so funny. We just got into it on the cruise. <laughs> me and my I called him, sent a picture of my sister. I uh, haven't talked to him in 16, 17 years. We, we got into it. So I don't love my father. Even though we say, honor your father, I, 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 I am admitting I, I refuse right now to do what Christ says. I will not love my father. Screw him. But see, then screw, screw him. No disrespect to you Fair and enough. to your situation. Say your thing because I know it's very personal. Yeah, it is. But you need to forgive him and you need to start loving him because how can you expect God to forgive you if you don't? I, do that? You know, Larry, and I'm with you on that. I, I may need to, but I refuse to. And I this is what that, it is. I, and think I, as I, brothers, I have no problem saying come I'm together after. and we need to love on you yeah. and yeah. we need to we need to counsel you on that and provide some tools and some support because I think that's important, man. Amen. Because I, I'll tell you for me, my dad, right? Mm-hmm. I love my dad, my father, not because he's given anything to me or done anything for me. He abandoned me at a uh, homeless shelter uh, as a kid when I was nine years old. You were in foster care? I was in foster care. We both had fathers. Correct. No, I I understand. And so even to this day, you know, my dad doesn't have very much to offer me, but I still love him and I forgave him and I'm trying my best to have a relationship with him. I remember when I first uh, got in touch with him after many, many, many years, I was already uh, an adult. Mm Mm-hmm. He was talking about going on fishing trips and doing I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, bro, you, you can't do the dad thing. I'm a grown ass man. Right. <laughs> like, I'm not going, I'm not going yeah. fishing with you. You there's no there are, there are no life lessons that you can teach me at this point. But that's a false way of thinking, yeah. because there are many life lessons that he can give to me still. And I love his personality. I figure I saw the similarities between us in terms of our sense of humor and our personality. So there's many things that me and my father uh, have in common. But it's still a challenge to this day because I can't. How do I forget what you did? And we're both grown men trying to find a relationship. Oh, yeah. may, may I? It's tough, you? but it's not impossible. And I don't know your your situation intimately. Exactly. Enough. So exactly. maybe there's some things there. But the reason why I say it doesn't matter is because it to Christ it doesn't matter what we've done. Yep. I'm not Christ. I no, understand. No, 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 I'm, no, no, no. I'm many, not Christ. How many mm-hmm. women have you just on this podcast and said, how right. many women have you had sex with uh, before Michelle? A thousand and three. Mm-hmm. How many romantic situations? How many times have you sinned? How many times have you cussed Agreed. people out? Agreed. How many times have you done evil? Agreed. A million and three times. Agreed. Uncountable. Just like everybody at this table. No, not evil. I've never done evil. No, sin is evil. Yeah. So anything that goes against God is evil, period. So anything we've done to offend God, because our good acts are like filthy rags to him. So even mm-hmm. the good acts that we say that we've done, it still falls short. It still falls short. Mm-hmm. So any of those things that we've mm-hmm. done is all sinful. Yet God's like, I got an out for you. I got an out for you. It's called Christ. Mm-hmm. I died on that Christ for you. The, the, the debt has already been paid. So Agree. you have to find a way within yourself to forgive that man. Not happening. I want to introduce something. Not happening. I, 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 this is what just was. I, 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 I say that okay. with love, by the way. And I'll, I do I'll love say you. this. Right. I'm gonna, Respect. I'm going to I'm going to drop this statement, and it is said in the word: when two or more men, two or more people are gathered in right. His presence, He mm-hmm. is there. So we have brought Christ into this conversation, right. and I say this, Orlando. 
you can love on your dad because he showed you everything not to be. Amen. How to stand Amen. for a family. How to mm-hmm. be a supporting Amen. husband. How to mm-hmm. raise love kids up right. and be in their corner when no one was in yours. Mm-hmm. You love him for showing you what not to be. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. By doing that yeah. in that distance. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be like, oh, dad, miss you, which go to the game. Mm-hmm. Nah, mm-hmm. that. <laughs> See, Orlando, Peace. You, Orlando, but you can love him. Because he showed you everything a man is not. Correct. And that, by God's grace, has allowed you to find a beautiful, loving woman that will stand by you regardless. Your kids have a father that has stood by them like Christ has stood by you. You love through that channel. Mm -hmm. And in time, I have faith that you will find a softened heart. Mm -hmm. To allow God to work on you. Mm Because he showed you. I would not. I'm standing next to one of the. uh, You famous to me. Okay. (laughs) I'm I'm sitting next to a famous Mm -hmm. comic book writer. Amazing husband. Mm -hmm. And a brother in Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thank your dad. Tell it. Because if it wasn't for his stupidity. I would not have you mm. that's deep all things work together for those that love the lord Amen. love him from a distance Talk love about him it. from the fact that <laughs> thank you dad thank you for showing me what not to be mm-hmm. thank you dad for being a stable sound male for my family mm-hmm. mm. love him through that channel mm. you know what just hit me right now joseph and genesis what uh his brothers. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. His brothers threw him in the mm-hmm. ditch. He became mm-hmm. second in command. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. they intended for evil, God intended, intended for, for good. good. For good. Mm-hmm. I hear that. It okay. all works together, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not. Please don't get me wrong. I am not discrediting right. what you went through. And I know I can't. I won't imagine. I can't imagine. And I'm I sorry you went now. through it. But I'm thankful because it has shown you how to stand stronger, mm-hmm. taller, and be the leader for your house. And that man, I will I will be shoulder to shoulder. I appreciate and, and, that. So just just try okay. try to have an open heart and open mind to allow God to work through that channel. Mm. That's all I have to say. Sorry. Well, let's just let's pray about let's pray let's about pray, that I'll real pray quick. Heavenly yeah. Father, we come to you in your Son Jesus Christ's name. Thank you for this opportunity for us to be together as brothers. Yes, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to, to share our thoughts. Uh, uh, some of them are crazy, but some of them are good, and we so we trust you. And all I want to ask you, Father God, is to. Uh, to give Orlando a softened heart at, at, at your time. Yeah. It's not going to be our timing. It's not going to be Orlando's timing. But at your timing, we just ask that yes, uh, you soften his heart and that you you show him a different perspective, something that he can understand, something that he can appreciate, and something that he can use practically for, mm-hmm. him, for, for, for him, Lord God. So we just come to you as brothers, brothers in Christ, asking you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. Well, before we wrap up the podcast, I just got one more question. So Shaq mentioned something about a man should never open up to his woman, you know? I, I saw Shaq that article. That? I saw it. It was yeah, a, yeah, an yeah, article. It was yeah. A yeah, because uh-huh. women will use it against you. Let's say if you open up to your woman like, yeah, I was a foster child. Then let's say you do something. That's why you was a foster child or something like that. Mm. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Because I have some thoughts on it. But well, share your thoughts. My thoughts are if it's the right one, why not? Of course, absolutely. Why not? You know, my wife knows everything. Yeah. Okay. Everything. Let, let's say this. Let's just call it out as it is. Shaq's not married. Exactly. That right. too. Yeah, you can't take advice from that. I'll take and, advice and, from and, you guys. And, and, and he's and, divorced. And, and he was living a worldly life style that he regrets openly mm-hmm. because he wasn't front and center with his wife. He wasn't real with his wife. He wasn't being transparent on where he was in the world and all the dynamics of being a celebrity he didn't have a safe place to talk about that mm. space and the pressure right. mm. so I wouldn't take advice from someone that regrets the loss of his marriage mm-hmm. I would take consideration on where I'm at with brothers at the table right. I sit and where who right. God has me around Yeah, my circle is not by accident mm. but absolutely if you're not able to walk through this life with your wife or a, a significant other Supposed that you're supposed one. to trust. You're one yeah. flesh. If you can't do that with her, then I don't right. know who you're going to do it with. Yeah, I mean, um, I it's so funny. You know, me and my work, 
me and my wife, we work out, we work out videos, and, and then we, again, we have to look at our intentions, what, what's behind certain things we do. And so when you bring that up, uh, we did this, we did this one video. Uh, I forgot what it was, Shalene, and we were doing this video, and during the little segment when they're going from one thing to another. My ex girlfriend pops up there. She's she works with her, and so here she is in the video. Yeah. And I just sit there for a minute. I'm like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> I said, if I don't tell her, I got to look at my motives as to why I didn't tell her. So mm-hmm. we were sitting there in the garage. I was like, honey, just want to let you know that female you just saw right there working the video. That's that's my ex from San Diego State. She's like, are you serious? And she she made me rewind it. And we got her, got her right on. But see, even of the small course. thing, because the small things matter. Yeah. So I tell her everything because if I stop telling her everything, I got to look at the motives and what's going to go with that. And if you don't have somebody you, you can love and tell everything, man, where's your, where's your life really going? I don't know Shaq's world or anything like that, but it's maybe because he wasn't transparent that he ended up in the situation that he did. It's mm-hmm. very possible. And I don't know where he is religiously or anything like that. And we're all striving. We're not perfect or anything like that. Um, but when you get married, you have a vow. Fire you voice. vow. It's, 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 yeah. This is what it is. And so his indiscretions, um, maybe he didn't commit to his vows. Maybe, what's her name, Shawnee didn't commit to her vows, whatever the situation was. But um, it takes two. It right. takes two. Yeah. And if only one, if only, it's only one, the other person isn't doing that, then this is this is what this is the way the world is. That's why I have, I think it's more than half of the country is like divorced now. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's over fifty percent. Yeah, it's over fifty six percent. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh my god! No, it's like crazy. what was it? Like twenty fifteen? It was like fifty one percent. It just oh keeps goodness. climbing. It just keeps climbing. Seventy two percent because the values are there. Are initiated yeah. by right. women for some reason. And I'm going to chime in. I'm going to chime in on that. And I think what's interesting about this is I had to kind of give thought to where my marriage is at and what is needed. Uh, if I remember the article and the headline and all that, it was like Shaq was stating that you shouldn't have pillow talk with a woman, this, that, the other. Oh, okay. And that's then, different. Well, yeah. that's, a, that's yeah, how that's it was different. like yeah. pillow talk framed. Pillow. Yeah. Um, okay. And I think what was interesting about that is the receding ends of both that scenario being with pillow talk, something happens before pillow talk. 85% of the time, when you have pillow talk, there is a physical, you're in bed, and I'll speak, you know, it's like, okay, I'll say it for what it is. Me and my wife, when we're intimate, pillow talk is next. I can't expect, I can't expect my wife to provide and meet my needs and me not meet hers. Listen, sleep is okay? next. Okay? Would you say sleep? <laughs> <For me>. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> After that Usher concert, it's, it's knocked out for me. Larry, you know what I'm thinking? We should do it. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm, I'm going to bed. I'm, All right. <laughs> thank you. But, <laughs> in that, it's interesting because their need, it goes back to that conversation yeah. of like meeting there and, and providing their comfort and security. Mm. In that pillow talk, that is their intimate moment. Especially, I mean, there's the physical side mm-hmm. of it. But mm-hmm. I can't help but believe, granted, I'm a male. I don't know. I'll never live it. But females have this aspect of them that needs to be met in that pillow mm-hmm. talk, that intimacy of conversation, mm-hmm. like speaks volumes for them. Mm-hmm. It's not about us at that moment. We mm-hmm. got ours, mm-hmm. okay? We sold our wild oats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're ready to pass out. Mm-hmm. But that's when neglect and, 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 and yeah. sets in because we're not able to feel what they are looking for. Yes. And that's, so we Agreed. have to be mindful of, we have to be able to be willing to have a type. Yes. It doesn't have to say detail. It'd be like, oh, you know, what'd you think of that show? It was okay. So y'all, y- y'all define me pillow talk then. Yeah, because I was going to say that. Because well, what, what was he alluding to? It, pillow yeah. t- it was pillow talk. He said no pillow talking in there. So what do y'all define what as is pillow, pillow talk? talk? I, need to, I don't know the definition. What is pillow talk? Okay. Please Because the way I look at it, to answer the question, I look at it as gossip. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That, really? So if you pillow talking, that means from where I'm from, yeah, you that. gossiping about your boys and who yeah, you hang with okay, and all well that stuff. Well, then that, that no, I that, like I, that's I, not pillow talking to me. So that's why. Thing? Is that a bay thing or what? It's just a, nah, it's just kind of a thing. Oh, okay. See, no, this, it's like a bro code. code. This is an important thing because, or maybe it's evolved for me since I've been married or now, you know, whatever. That's why I need clarity. Pillow talk. I'll say this: when I dated twenty years ago. No, there was no pillow talk. <laughs> so, so are you defining pillow talk as just a conversation you have literally while laying on a pillow after intimate sex? With my wife, yeah, because that's all that's left. 
I'm see? not. But see, and here's the thing. And, and the, the, Atlanta brought up a good point. Shaq's not married. Yeah. He has whatever well, he has. So whoever's uh, rotating p- could be pillow rotating. Talk to, to me has always been defined as like gossip. It's just a, it's not literal pillow talking. It's just gossip about random yeah. stupid stuff, or or not just stupid stuff, but things that are happening. But see, go- okay, if you're gossiping, then no, you shouldn't be gossiping. Well, the Bible talks against gossiping. That's why I'm asking the question. See, okay, because if he, if it's that, then I agree with Shaq. No, dude, you shouldn't be talking about your boys and what they got going on. There's a you know. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, this says so. what does pillow talk mean with friend? Most people like to think of pillow talk as the uncomfortable conversations we have after sex, but our definition encompasses so much more. Put simply, pillow talk is any conversation that happens between two or more people from the cozy confines of a bed. Thank you. Okay. okay. So you it all con- comes back, and maybe that aspect of... We have pillow talk all the time. Singleness, when you're single and you're still out chasing, I, I, I probably would back that. It's like, you're dating. Why I would agree. I want to... Do- like, yeah. I ain't going to tell you about my boys. Right. I ain't going to tell you what's going right. on. I like, right. I like you... Enough to do this. I agree, but I don't know you. To, and, yeah, and, and I agree. Don't, yeah. Like mm. that's different. My wife, she knows everything in my closet. Everything. She know like yeah. of course. And I think that's where when I read that article, it was like no, I, I can't get I behind can't that. But yeah. with my understanding of pillow talk, I'm just shooting the breeze. I've just had my right. intimacy with my wife. My wife took care of me. Let me meet her emotional needs in conversation. There you go. See, but see that that involves that type of int- intimacy is ongoing. It's not just after sex. Because intimacy begins way before you get into the bedroom. Exactly. Of course. Way, way, way before intimacy begins in everything that you do. So when you get into the bed, or at least for me, I don't mind chatting a little bit. But you sleeping after. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. You got yours way before we got in the bed. You know what I mean? We've we, we been talking. That's all we do is talk. Mm. I'm tired of <laughs> It's time for some action. Get these My legos boo. out. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, after that we put like that, Larry. Huh? Like that, <laughs> like that. It's Larry's Larry. Right. Larry's, Larry's Larry. Larry's Larry. Larry's Larry. Larry's Larry. Float on, I'm out. Larry. Float, <laughs> float on. Yeah, go to bed. Okay. Yeah. I think, but some of the best conversation I ever have is pillow talk with my wife. We talk about all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Some things we agree on, some things we don't. We start talking about our in laws, our child, all kinds of things. So, and some of the, the those conversations, some of the best conversations we ever had, mm-hmm. because we. We can talk about others. I don't think there's anything I, I can think of I've never spoken to her about in front of her or, any, or brought it up either before sex, after sex, mm-hmm. or just laying in bed. Well, nothing's going on. We're just talking. That's why I like her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm in a uh, relationship with somebody I love, and I actually like her. Mm-hmm. Right. You yeah. know? Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Okay. Well, well yeah. Guys. Thank you for coming out today with all of our This is skills. fantastic. This is, yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm on cloud nine. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. But, uh, this is love. Yeah, but we'll definitely uh, revisit this again. And okay. And if you guys like the content we're throwing up, we, the conversation we had today, like and subscribe. That way we can do more videos like this. Thank you for tuning in. Until the next upload. Peace. 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 About them Niners. <laughs> <laughs> I know we went over Robert. <laughs> there we <Yeah>. go. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't Robert. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>